Yeah, shout out Mojav, Mojave, Mojave. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm my bad, bro. I'm my bad. Shout, shout y'all out. He's not a funny character. He's just weird. Dr. Umar is just weird to you? I actually like Dr. Umar for, for the most part, to be honest. In the morning. The Breakfast Club. The Snow Bunny Crisis is fucking insane. <laughs> Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. King Kong Con Consciousness is back. That is a crazy way to introduce a black man. What the fuck is Charlemagne on? Uh, see, this, it's I see more of a documentary about the lifestyle of pimps and prostitutes. I see why. I see why you left. What do you? What the fuck do you mean, King Kong Consciousness? What? What? What he what he talking about? Dr. Umar Johnson, welcome. Peace and Pan Africanism, brothers. Glad to be back. <laughs> glad to have you, man. Um, first of all, you look slim, brother. You don't you, you don't slim down a little bit, huh? Oh uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Stick has not changed. His build is the exact same I as the last time you interviewed him. I think I have. Are, if he comes um, I didn't do nothing intentional, so let me not sit. To be weighing on someone's heart. Wait, 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 what did the, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Hold on, wait a minute. Nah, 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 nah. Hold on. I can't see what the fuck he just said. Okay, wait, hold on. Uh... No. Where'd it go? I resonated when he said LGBT are icky because I fucked people's fathers, and that's gotta be weighing on some. I resonated when he. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I re <laughs> Bro, I what? What does that have to what? Yeah, I don't I gotta do a purge. I gotta do a purge of my audience at some point. I didn't know I didn't know I don't know where you niggas came from. You didn't come from me. I guess it's just, you know, you didn't come from me and Waza, I hope. And first right. things first, man, congrats on the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I've been paying attention. I yes, see sir. that you, you, you yes, got sir. the building. Oh, yes, wait, hold sir. on. Let me move my head. renovations on the building. Yes, I saw sir. you put the HVAC in, all yes, kind of sir. other stuff. See? Which see? The school is coming. The school is coming. It's here. That is a crazy name, but it's here. Just about done. Uh, electric is awaiting a permit. HVAC is awaiting controls. They're actually at the school right now. Plumbing. See school on the way. School on the way. Piece. Fire Chill alarm out. is done. They got to check one more piece to that. Uh, the monitoring system is done. Blazer on top of sweater vest, on top of tie, on top of dress shirt is crazy still, but school on the way. I'm hoping by the end of the calendar year we can get our inspection and have a grand opening in February. Hopefully. And you waiting on? You got to get accreditation too, or? Nah. Well, your accreditation comes from the state. Got you, got so you, got it's you. the state that gives you the license to operate. Mm -hmm. If you want accreditation beyond that, you can seek out professional accreditation bureaus, but that's <laughs> not legally required. Man, why don't you talk about that more, uh, Dr. Umar, especially being that they tried to clown you for so long about, you know, not I having the school. I don't mind that because if you know that your mission is genuine, oh, here we go, there's here we no go. need to respond to the negativity because at some day, mm. the fruit of your works will manifest. You feel, you feel, you feel what I'm saying? Let 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 a real nigga talk for a second. Ooh, you, you follow? Yeah, so I, 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 I've been so I'll argue for the, for the longest. Know one day they're going to see the school. Now talk about the, the, the process, because it was a long process. It was a very long was process. Trials and tribulations yes, sir. and hurdles. So yes, sir. Talk about that a little bit and what you right. had to get through. And also, he's spiritual with it. Yes, sir. We um, took our first donation in St. Louis 2014. We heard about the St. Paul's College, which was an HBCU closed in Virginia. Mm -hmm. They wanted $2 million, so we tried to raise it as quickly as we can. That was a bit ambitious. Oh, my God. Here come Balma. Oh, bro. First of all, last time I tried to do unbanned requests, um, my whole stream I had to restart it. So, um, unless I get a link that can do it, or I'm gonna figure it out and then we are gonna do it next stream. I guarantee. I prompt God. If all I said was God, from what I can see, so all I said was God. So I don't know where this narrative began of me saying something totally different. I didn't. So. Me saying God and then niggas misinterpreting it and recontextualizing on God when I never technically said on God and I just said God, I don't know. 
I don't know. Niggas, niggas didn't make niggas make me nervous. We didn't succeed. Mm-hmm. It was sold to an Asian uh, company. Unfortunately, muted what? HBC I don't know. Sold bro. to another race. I think. It's Use a your eyes to pay attention for us as a people. So then we just started looking for a day school. So I went to uh, Chicago, Detroit, Florida, uh, Ohio, Damn. all over the country. I was just flying. Wait, you? Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, what he said? What he said? Hold on. An HBCU sold to another race. I think is a great disappointment for us as a people. So then we just started looking for a day school. So I went to uh, Chicago, Detroit. Detroit! Mm. It's out of tune. It's out of tune right now. It's out of tune. I got to put it back in tune. I got to put it back in tune. I got to put it back in tune. Wait. I got to put it back in tune. uh, Ohio. All over the country, I was just flying, looking for a school. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, Mm -hmm. I was on LoopNet, which was my main source of new property. And Mm -hmm. I saw this campus in Wilmington, Delaware, that I had heard about but never had a chance to see. So I'm on my way to Nat Turner's celebration, Mm -hmm. uh, August 21st, 2017, the Great North American Eclipse. I stopped. I saw the campus. I said, this looks pretty nice. When I got back from Nat Turner, I had to go to Cuba first to get my EFA initiation. I practiced Europe of spirituality. It's crazy because when I, whenever I hear Dr. Umar talk about literally anything, I, I wholeheartedly believe everything he's saying. And then at the exact same time, think he's lying about everything that, that's coming out of his mouth. It's crazy. The, 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 the fucking like the, the, the relationship I have with this man's words. Came back from Cuba. And I got a chance to go into the school, and I saw it. I said, we want this school, but they wanted $2 million. We couldn't afford that. We only had a half of a million. Mm-hmm. So I negotiated with them from August of 17 until February of 19, and they finally decided to sell us the building for the money that we had. Wow. So now we got the building. So what's been going on the past three and a half years? Getting contractors who you can trust to help you with it. And contractors were not kind to us, man. They ripped us off. They scammed us. Con. They stole out the building. And they'll do that. He, he's spitting facts here, okay? As a younger individual that was working on a bit of a project myself and that ultimately got something into fruition, uh, doing my own thing and also putting it together kind of myself as well, a lot of contractor-ass niggas will try to give you unfair prices. Bro, it, a contractor came out to a facility that I was working on. Mm facility almost done i ain't working on a school or nothing but i got a little something you know what i'm saying anyway um i put doors in this particular area i put doors in this particular area but at the end of the day i, I called these contractors and a nigga gave me a quote for ten thousand dollars now ten thousand dollars wouldn't be a crazy thing what does that have to do with any that has nothing to do with no that's not what i just said you 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 dick sucking all right get off dick and maybe like maybe if the, if the saliva in your throat wasn't like so like crazy it wouldn't leak into your ears and prevent you from hearing what the fuck i'm saying i never said that what i said was i was getting doors installed in a particular facility and then boom contractor said 10k for some fucking storm doors now storm doors aren't that bad okay i had already did the storm doors so i did the storm doors myself but then afterwards i said yo i just need screen doors screen doors he still said ten thousand. i'm like nigga that should that should be like two three thousand max for some double for some double screen doors on top of some storms like what are you talking about so he's right a lot of niggas in the contracting field slash industry will definitely you know what i'm saying try to scam try to scam out how am i lying how am i a lesbian all right, bro. Con is real. The con and contractor. I've been, with, I've been dealing with it for the last five years. It's very years. real, brother. Absolutely. And no way finally, he just tried to make that we connection. We had our second FDMG festival this past September the 10th. And I said, you know what? We may have to step outside the African-American community to get this done. Because we've been waiting three years for our people to help us. Not oh, so he's saying niggas wasn't reliable. Whoa. That's pretty anti-black, Umar. We could afford to pay him, but they wasn't being honest with us mm-hmm. and straight up that's crazy and of course we know that's not all of our contractors we want to be clear that's crazy met a lot of uh, decent contractors along the way but the ones who we had to use because they was licensed and certified where we are they didn't really do us right so i said let's go with some white folks you hire you employed white folks over blacks this is the real snow bunny crisis they ain't gonna call him out on that though why they got a pride flag in the back knowing he homophobic and guess what here we are, 90 days later, 
and the white contractors have gotten us to the finish line mm. in three months. Mm-hmm. Why are they putting my nigga through that like that, though? Mm-hmm. Versus Crazy. three years mm. waiting on our own people. So what does that say? It says that we need the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Or, it says that black boys have to be raised and trained in how to be black men and how to be committed to the black community. Because I think as a community, we've lost our integrity, our honor, our loyalty, and our commitment. If I was who I am for black people, for the Mexican-American community, that school would have been done three years ago. If I was who I am to the Asian community, the Anglo-Saxon community, the Native American community, that school gets done the first year we purchased it. Mm-hmm. We're not sitting here three and a half years after purchase, just now getting to the finish line and needing white people to get us there. And what, know, is the, what is the curriculum? Gonna- well, I mean, I get what he's saying, but like, you could have just kept looking low-key. I ain't going to lie. It is what it is. You could just kept looking. You could, you you still could have kept it black. You just got tired of waiting. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I get what you're saying though. Like, I completely understand what you said, but but you you just got tired of waiting, which is fine, which is completely understandable, bro. If you go, you can keep losing money after a certain time, bro. But just say you you, you got impatient. What it look like we our in addition to your required math, science, language, and social studies, we're going to have financial and economic science mm-hmm. critical. How to do your own taxes, real estate, international investments. How to do your own taxes, real estate, internet, skills that actually help you in the long run. I like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Business planning. Because as we've talked about before, going to college is not automatically a recipe for success, but it is automatically a recipe for debt. So for those young men who want to go to college, we want to give them that ability to do that. But we also want to give them other means of making an economic uh, impact and survival uh, plan for their lives. He's speaking facts right there. So- we got financial and economic. We have dietary and nutritional, how to eat to live, a lot of your Dr. Sabi type of information. Okay, wait. Now you lost me. Now you lost me. Now you lost me. All right? Let's not do that. All right? Let's 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 push that to the side real quick. All right? You can give me some information on certain shit that will definitely help improve the quality of life through nutrition, but not, not the Sebi route. All right? We had already been down this road. We don't need to go down that road again. Let's calm down. Let's draw it back a little bit. You can go to nutrition route. Just try it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Doc- Maybe he's impatient because of all the accusations, but if he didn't want them, he probably should have announced the building or shouldn't have announced the building until it was. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, Josh. Ila, Ila, Africa, rest in peace to both of them. That will- He probably should have waited on the announcement until majority of it was done, is what Josh was saying. Being there, agricultural and agronomical. We're going to teach them how to grow. They have to grow their own food in order to graduate. We have to become agriculturally self-sufficient. In addition to that, spiritual and astrological science, I want our young men to understand how African people related to God before Abraham, Mm -hmm. before Jesus, before Muhammad. Okay, let's focus on the more practical skills that they can develop though right now, not necessarily spirituality, which is optional as you go through life. I still agree that having a strong spiritual foundation, even sometimes religious foundation can help you on later in life. I just think that you should mainly stick to the, you know, uh, the, 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 the tangible, you know, skill set was, was, was definitely uh, most beneficial to the average person in the moment. But I'm, there's nothing wrong with spirituality and all that other stuff. Nothing wrong with that at all. Just, you know, make sure we get to the to the nitty gritty, to the facts, to the shit that you can touch and, and see. And, you know, what I'm saying feel in the, in the exact moment. You know what I'm saying? But I, I fuck with God. Those religions and all due respect to all of them, they're only. Christianity is 2,000 years old. Islam is 1,500 years old. Judaism is about four or 5,000 years old. But traditional African culture and spirituality is more than a quarter of a million years old. We dealt with God far longer from a non-Abrahamic tradition than we have from an Abrahamic tradition. Nothing's wrong with those. But I want our children to understand how we deal with the ancestors, how we deal with the earth and the land. And so we're going to have that. There will also be science of the black family. So that includes science of the black man, the black woman, the black child, how to be a gentleman, how to take care of your woman, how to raise your children, how to be a leader in the community. Okay, so he's basically saying social awareness teachings, which I think is good for young people to learn. Um, Nothing wrong with that. And of course, there will be military. I don't think that should be an exclusively black uh, thing, but yeah, sure. Do it. Do it in the school that you're creating. But I think that should be something that, you know, most people implement into most schools. 
and political science if I didn't mention that. We do want to teach them survival skills tradition. Taught by a sexist is crazy. Oh, it sounded like that, yeah. Wait, wait, wait why are you saying military? Wait, what did what did he say? The military. Oh. Okay. I didn't know he said that. All right. Teach your children how to be a leader in the community. And of course there will be military and political science if I didn't mention that. We do want to teach them survival skills, traditional African martial arts. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. He just he just worded it wrong. He just worded it weird, but like, ain't nothing wrong with teaching a like you know what I'm saying like I mean maybe you shouldn't maybe the gun thing you know a little too early for that you know what I'm saying I don't know bro I'm so on the fence about this because on the one hand I want to keep kids away from weapons and shit like that on the other hand I want them to be able to defend themselves too knowing how crazy the world is it's a very slippery slope arts both with and without weapons understanding the world i wouldn't i wouldn't i just wouldn't describe it as military that we live in why is africa the richest continent but in the poorest condition why was barack obama made president and it had nothing to do with america reinventing herself okay why has multiculturalism been used as a weapon against african people so we want to make sure that we are graduating well-rounded young men who can go anywhere in the world and build independent communities we are a nation what about you know the young women too though like you only talking about the young men bro like what do young women need to learn about you know what i'm saying they, they should too you ain't got like specific courses you know geared toward uh young black women i think you should do that building a cat because if you if you empower young black women you are empowering young black men too you know you got you got to work on both i don't i don't just want you to i don't want you to miss the other one you know what i'm saying we are not college prep we are not military prep we are not trade school prep of course he can only speak from his perspective i would like to think that he would employ you know what i'm saying uh a, a black woman to kind of be able to guide that 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 lane too though i'm just i'm not hearing it yet but i gotta keep they listening you know what I'm saying? they gonna learn to cook <laughs> okay mm -hmm. but above all that we are nation building prep. Can, can you answer that president obama question i'd like to know the answer to that oh barack obama was made president for two reasons domestically he was made president to force uh, alternative sexual lifestyles onto black children, uh, sexual confusion as a means of population control. Okay, well, here, here go to, here go to, here go to, uh, here go. <laughs> <laughs> and you lost me. <laughs> I don't get this population control narrative because niggas are being born every second. If there is a population control narrative, niggas ain't listening. Ain't it like 9 billion niggas here already? Like, what do you mean? And internationally, he was made president. And to be fair, I'm not saying that I want less niggas, even though that would be great. Even though that would be great. Uh, Resourceful-wise, <laughs> wouldn't we benefit from having less niggas on the planet? I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that, like, cool. I'm just saying, though, like, chill, gang. Okay? Like, what you mean? How is there, how, what, 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 what master plan is there? to go to Africa and to force AFRICOM there to build military bases all throughout the continent. And guess what? There's been about six coups in Africa over the past year, and every single coup was in a country with a United States military base. No coincidence. America only practices democracy when the person who- I mean, don't make that a weird take, because like, definitely we need less people. Before, like, Until you can learn to take care of the people that are currently here, stop having more. You're so obsessed with like this this narrative that you've built up in your head that they that they want people to stop having kids. I think that's a beautiful fucking idea because if you learn how to take care of them before you have them, maybe you wouldn't have to deal with the whole black trauma as much because because you could address it before it you know happens to the new generation before the next one is born. So maybe yeah, maybe stop having the kids. Maybe you know what I'm saying get on some contraceptives, get on some birth control, get on some fucking vasectomies on on some shit like that until you learn how to fucking raise a child. And then we don't have to go through this whole back and forth about black trauma and having to, you know, keep uh, raising them uh, to to, to kind of learn to love themselves and shit like that. You know what I mean? But other than that, like, don't 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 push the whole like population narrative because that's dumb as fuck. Who wins the election has an agenda that is in the interest of America. Charlemagne, you can be elected president, but if your agenda is not in the interest of the white power structure, you will be overthrown. Oh, Democracy. Man. Only lasts as long. And there are black, there are black gay niggas, bro. There was black gay niggas before Obama came out. So I don't know what he's talking about. As the person winning the election is favorable to the agenda of the power. Well, I think you see that all the time, especially with the GOP. You saw that in Georgia, right? They didn't care if Herschel. Nigga said like me. Walker was a, a, a terrible candidate. They knew that if he got into the Senate, he was going to do the bidding of the GOP. Who won the runoff? Warnock. Warnock won. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say to that. Say it. And my, 
maternal ancestry is from Georgia. It didn't make a difference if Warnock won. It didn't make a difference if Herschel Walker won. Because both of them are candidates who are aligned with two white racist political parties. The Democratic Party don't care about black people. The Republican Party don't care about black people. Raphael Warnock hasn't done nothing his first term. He's not going to do nothing his second term. I don't like this take. I feel like it's so reductive to people who are trying to vote. Like, obviously, neither political party is going to fully align with your personal interests. But that doesn't mean don't vote because there there can't be uh, one that aligns closest to what you think could be beneficial to your future. Like, that don't mean like you're not going to you're never going to find a nigga. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you're never going to find a nigga who is completely 100 percent got your best interest at heart in the political field. There's not going to be a single political party. So. I don't know where he's going with this. It's just where he's going with this feels like, okay, yeah, so like we shouldn't even eat, we shouldn't even like entertain. Don't vote Democrat. Don't like there's not there's not go with what best suits your interests. That is what you vote for. And and if Herschel Walker would have won, it would have been the same thing. One of the things we have to do as black people, we have to get off this Republican Democratic political dichotomy sure. because it does not serve us and it wasn't created for our interests. That is a white intellectual conversation, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Our dichotomy is not democracy they or republicanism. Our dichotomy is freedom or oppression. That's the black dichotomy. Who belongs to the Freedom Party? Who belongs to the House Negro Party? That's it. Look at the Congressional Black Caucus, 59 African-Americans, and more than half of them are old enough to be your grandparents. Why do we have people in the CBC in their 70s, in their 80s, in their 60s? Don't get me wrong. In African culture, we believe an old man for counsel well, and a young, young man, man for, for war. war. Mm -hmm. But look who we got in D.C. fighting for the gears in his head is turning real crazy justice for right African now. people. They're senior citizens. And we wonder why nothing's getting done because they don't want to pass the baton. And this is an issue that we have had in the black community for a long time. Not just Congressional Black Caucus, black church, black community organization, where we don't want to pass the baton to the next generation. And why not? Black men and women are seldom given an opportunity to experience real power. So when we get a taste of real power, we don't like to give it up because we're not used to it. That's why you got 100-year-old pastors running churches when you got 20- and 30-year-old young pastors in the same congregation who will never get a chance to give a sermon. Uh, I mean, I understand what he's saying, I do, but at the same time, it's like white old niggas that don't want to pass the baton either. Like, I get what he's saying, though. I do. I understand what he's saying. And what he's saying, in theory, makes a lot of sense. Um, but since there are so many white folks who've had so much power and so much opportunity to do the kind of, the kind of things that he's describing right now, um, there are just as many examples of them falling to the same pitfalls of the same things that he's talking about right now than there are black. But I get what he mean, though. I do. I, I completely understand what he mean. That's why you see so many old leaders in black organizations because they don't want to pass the baton because the old black man's ego is bigger and stronger than a young black man's ego. And I, I want to go back to something you said about Obama. You know, Obama was opposed to same sex marriage in uh, 08. Oh, when he ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the power structure told him you're going to uh, support this when you get in there. That was the second term. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Because the agenda had not yet been set, but when the agenda was the agenda set, he had to carry it out because Obama belonged to a white racist political party. Let mm. me ask you a question. The students that want to attend your, your school. Yes, sir. Is there, uh, Thank you. Is there anything? What are the qualifications, if there are any? Uh, be black. I mean, <laughs> there's really no qualifications. So be black. So it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. It doesn't matter if you're mixed. Or oh, God, no. <laughs> like, I didn't think this through. It's about to be a whole bunch of black gay kids, a whole bunch of black trans kids that come up. He's going to be like, uh, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. <laughs> Or anything that you can well, post. a mixed African. Oh my God! For those of us who are revolutionary Pan African nationalists, Garveyites, a mixed African is considered an African. Mm -hmm. I do not discriminate between a black man with a white mother or a black man with a with a black mother or a black woman with a white father or a black woman with a, a black father. If one of your parents is an African. We accept you as an African as long as you identify. You have to be psychologically black and you also have to be biologically black. Yeah, but what age is going to the school for a kid to say, yeah, I'm black and fully understand what that means? You understand, but we don't take issue with mixed race. Like if a three or four or five year old come in there on some like, 
I don't really know what I am. Are you going to let him in still? Many of the greatest Pan-Africanists who ever lived were mixed race. There's even some argument that the greatest revolutionary of all time in his country, the prophet Nat Turner, he may have been of mixed race. Quick saying 20 percent, bro. Like that was like that's I, I low key called him and they was like, yo, we might have gave you the wrong results. His mother may have been raped by the slave master. You see, so we don't take issue over that on the plantation. You had no control how you came into this world. Now, with that being see, said, he talking? it's important that black men and black women, even if they be mixed race Africans, they understand that we will not perpetuate that mistake because it does not benefit the black community. So although you may have <laughs> called them niggas mistakes, have a, a white parent, you will only produce children with someone who looks like you. Be careful oh drinking God. that. It's called liquid death now. You should. It's water. Look at the can. It's water. It's water. I'm gonna make sure. I, I actually think that's you don't want to get my brother nothing. Just get you some no, regular no, water, no, man. There's, no, no, there's, no water. <laughs> there's water in a can called Liquid Death. What? The <laughs> CIA. <laughs> or is he? Tr am, I, am I just dumb? Is the CIA in here? <laughs> no, I think that's. that's uh, I think that's Wiz Khalifa. Okay. Leaf is water, actually. I think he's. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Wiz Khalifa from PA. My so bad. It might be okay. Okay. I ain't never I'm heard that or seen it a day in my life. Brother Malcolm went to the Middle East. They poisoned his drink. Oh my God. I think Malcolm I had to get yeah, pumped. Yeah. They tried to kill Malcolm in the Middle East. Johnny. Well, we ain't trying to kill you. We ain't trying to kill you. I know y'all not. Okay. But I don't know who else around here. Oh my God. This nigga just said he was Martin Luther King. Okay. Johnny Cochran was poisoned. And okay. you know, Johnny Cochran was murdered because Johnny Cochran was on the verge of finding out or he was going to determine how much reparations America owes African people. Nigga, regardless of how much reparations America owes black people, that's just not happening. Mm -hmm. Right after that, John y'all got to get off this boat. Oh, my bad. That is crazy. I did not mean it like that. Y'all gotta get off this, off this plane. <laughs> I'm saying, oh, like you can't, like this, 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 that. What that one's just not happening. That's not happening, bro. And Cochran ends up dead. I gave up on that dream a long Congo, time ago. First Democratic. Even if they find out the amount, you not getting it. The elected uh, prime minister of the Congo. Uh, they poisoned his daughter in trying to poison him. The CIA. That's not a quote. The so we got to be clear that this is the history. Doctor Khalid Abdul Muhammad. A leader of the uh, New Black Panther Party, he may have also been poisoned. Bro, so, I'm going to get a uh, sound bite out of this interview. We got to be careful 100%. about what we eat and what we drink, especially me. So, so what do you think about the study of H.R. 40? You know what I mean? Because, I mean, that study is... The reparations bill. Yeah, it's the reparations bill that's supposed to see and determine, you know, who gets reparations and how much reparations... Well, let's take it a step further. Mm -hmm. The state of California oh, legislature God. just approved in the past few days okay. a bill that will give each African-American in the state add, of California I'm 233... I will, though thousand dollars as a reparations payment I, I, think, I, I think that's some bullshit i think gavin newsom is just doing that because reparations is going to be the buzzword for 2024 to get black people energized it is and it's also a trap now first of all the reparations movement comes out of the pan-africanist movement we gave birth to reparations it's oh, not God. anything new uh that's our thing mm -hmm. although it's for the whole people a cash payout for reparations is a trap we come mm -hmm. in and the reason a cash payout for reparations is a trap is because so much of what needs to be fixed in American society for African people will take more than cash to do it. Yeah, how the fuck did he get away from that? Wait, how did he get out of the gay question? Low key, I just, I just noticed how he just slid past that. When, what did he say? In other words, I give D8 DJ injury $233,000. Or if I take the Bob Johnson plan, he said each American African I don't even know how he slid past that. Is due $350,000, right? I give you $350,000. Does that stop mass incarceration? Nope. Does that stop miseducation? Does that stop gentrification? Does that stop police genocide? Does that guarantee us access to wealth? I mean, in the state of California, what can you get with $233,000? I'm not even sure if that's enough for a house. Wait, is that per person that they're, that they're referencing? Like 233k, like per person? Is that what he just was saying? <laughs> Nigga said three Teslas. Yo, te oh, I hate Teslas, bro. We'll talk about that another time. And on top of that, the minute they give you the payment, they can reduce the value of the payment 
through inflation. Mm-hmm. So I can flood the economy with money so the 233 is only worth 120 mm-hmm. in about 24 hours. And then guess what they're going to do after they give the reparations to African people? What they they're going to find subsidy programs to give to the LGBTQ, to the women, to immigrants, to other people. Nigga said to the women, to LGBTQ is if black don't encompass those. So at the end of the day, what looked like a step up for black people would be a step back. If I was in charge of the reparations conversation. It's like sometimes when people have this conversation, they alienate alienate black people to such a high degree that they cannot also be women cannot also be girls cannot also be gay cannot also be tra- like they can only be black and that is it number one control of all black music must only be done through the black community i agree with that no non-african can control our music Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Biggie, Tupac. If, if if the publishing, if the marketing, if the promotion, if the recording is not. But that, I mean, it's, it's, un, it's incredibly unrealistic, but like I agree with it. Controlled by black people, that has to change. We own our own music. Nobody can own, sell, produce, publish, promote black music but black why, people. Why, why is that? I mean, you you would like that to be the case but the, the the way shit is like it's owned by others unfortunately a lot of it so like i get what you're saying but as long as there's that guy who's got his hand out offering the kid who needs to you know what i'm saying get a lick or get his come up uh you know half a million to a million sometimes two million sometimes 10 million um for his hit single for a, or, or for an album that they want to recoup their money on uh people they gonna keep taking it unless there's alternatives that, that are offered and if they aren't offered then yeah this is going to be the system that you're talking about constantly so i don't know what the alternative is but yeah That's important. i get what he's saying and it's completely i'm completely on board so music is one of america's leading export industries america makes more money off black music than almost anything else that she sells so if we control the music we have a steady stream of global <laughs> revenue where me. we can build a black wall street in every single city in america for black people that's how much money will be coming in from black music that's mm-hmm. one two all mm-hmm. black e- inventions return to us permanently everything we invented is a permanent patent for africans and if you want to use it you must pay us a percentage the cell phone we invented that internet that's ours hell i'm like th- he sounds very very convincing right now but personally like i said i don't know much of anything about black inventions l education l uh whatever the fuck it is when i'm when i was growing up but at the end of the day uh the the he sounds convincing you got to show me the you got to show me the show me the show me the proof that's all helicopter that's ours self lubricating engine the microphone the stop sign the walkie talkie why are those lights on right now cuz a black man named Lewis Latimer wrote a textbook that taught mm-hmm. China the UK, Canada, and America, how to light up a whole city at night. Without Lewis Latimer, you don't get street lights at night. You don't get constant illumination anywhere in the world. I don't even be going out at night like that, for real, for real. But I. So guess what? Anybody running lights, you paying black people. Take back ownership of our music. Take back ownership of our inventions. Next on the list is all the confiscated lands. We had okay. hundreds of thousands of acres of land stolen from us between 1865 and Malcolm's assassination in 1965. We need to put together a research team that's going to investigate all the land that was stolen from African people and return it back. Since most of our people are dealing with homelessness, we have the highest homelessness rate in black America since the 60s. If we can get our land back, that will go a long way to getting a lot of our single mothers and their children off the street. In addition to that, America has uh, about 10 major exports, gold, Oil, water, Mm -hmm. electricity, we get a 25% cut permanently. This is perpetual. I, again, the intensity at which he is speaking right now is lovely, but, but you're coming in with demands with very, very shaky evidence and or proof. And you're you're basically just saying, hey, let's get together a research team, not knowing what the fuck they going to find. Mm-hmm. Every time America makes a dollar, we get 25 cents of that dollar as part of the reparations payment. American Africans, 60 percent of us make up 10 states. All 10 of the states that represent 60 percent of us are seaboarding states. We should automatically control the port so we know what's coming in, what's going out. And we also get a percentage of that. But here's my. Bi- I see how he convinced niggas to help him build the school. I completely understand. Because like he got me on board with a bunch of shit. Not really, but on board with a bunch of shit. And then it's like two seconds later. Okay, but how are we going to get it done, though? Biggest issue with reparations three. Mm-hmm. One, psychological damages. 
I'm not hearing enough of the reparations talking heads discuss enough about the psychological damages. You know you can get far more from what you're owed psychologically than you can ever get for 243 years of unpaid labor on the plantation. He talked like a cell phone salesman, like a cell phone case salesman at the mall. Like he just convincing you got you you got to have this. The psychological damage is what, what what affects us the most. Every time you see a black man with a white woman, that's psychological damage. Okay, this is the conversation I'm trying to have here. Let, let's see what let's see what we talking about. Every time you see a black woman with a blonde wig on her head, that's psychological damage. Okay, wait, huh? What if she like? What if she want to be uh? You know what I'm saying? Like an anime character for a day. Every time you see a little black boy or girl playing with a white doll instead of a black doll, that's psychological damage. When you see a black man take the life of, of another black man. What if I play with a, a Goku character? I had a Super Saiyan 4 doll when I was a kid, like real growing up. I had a Super Saiyan 4 like Goku. Like what do that what does that count as? He was like a he was like half human, half monkey. Is that racist? And that psychological damage. America owes us more for the psychological Holocaust than she can ever owe for the labor. So we need to talk more about that. In addition to that, I don't hear nobody talking about the role the Arabs played in the transatlantic slave trade. I don't hear anybody talking about the role that the European Jews played in the slave trade. I don't hear nobody talk about the role that the Catholic Church played in the slave trade. If we're going to talk about reparations, bring every group that was responsible, those who financed the slave ships. That'd be Nigerians too, though. Okay, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trying to let him finish. So I, there was, I didn't expect him to cut him off. <laughs> was participation from some. I did not expect Charlemagne to cut him off. African kingdoms. We know that Dahomey, for example, which was popularized in the Lion King movie. The, Woman, me, King. the Woman King movie. There was some African <laughs> participation, Lion but guess King. what? The transatlantic slave trade was a European operation. It was oh controlled. Oh, my God, bro. It this grew. thing is jokes. It was financed by Europeans. When many of the African nations found out what was really being done to us, because in Africa, there was no concept of chattel slavery. There was no such thing as owning people forever. There was no such thing as perpetual ownership of an entire family line or a bloodline. You understand? We had There was no such thing as being dehumanized. Okay. European slavery stripped African people of our humanity. There's no precedent for that in the world before European chattel slavery. They didn't know what they were getting into. They were wrong and can be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But let's not take the onus off of the true power structure well so what, what he's trying to say is that like nigerian niggas was selling niggas not under the context of like hey yo these niggas can't do nothing they not like slave slaves and the european niggas that was buying them was like not nah, these slave slaves like that's what he was trying to say like the he's trying to say like the nigerian niggas was like yo uh like they slaves but like not for real though and then the Europeans was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got you, bro. We got you. And then it was like, nah, like they, we lied. As soon as we got home, we lied. No McDonald's here. Like, that's what he's saying. Behind slavery. And that was the white man. I didn't say Portuguese. Oh, Portuguese mm -hmm. was in it. The Dutch was in it. The Italians was in it. The Germans was in it. Who didn't have a hand either in slavery outright or colonization that came after it? And when you factor in colonization with slavery, you can't possibly blame an African nation for that because they suffered during colonization as much as we did in slavery. So you just said a whole bunch of that shit. But at the end of the day. If I'm giving a nigga away for some change, I got to know in the back of my mind, yo, he probably going to get fucked up wherever he going. Fuck you mean you didn't know. Yes, I'm 57. I'm, I'm playing the part. Y'all want to dick suck so much, I'm going to play the fucking part. So I reject any proposal that wants to make African people more liable for slavery than the white people who owned, controlled, expanded, and benefited. Oh, I oh yeah, I get that. 100% I'm on his side with that. Because some people take that as a, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, since they sold them, they are just, they're the, they're the main niggas that we got to look at. Nah, nigga. Because they won in America. That's obvious. No, nah, that's not, that's really not obvious. That's actually a very common counter argument, quote unquote, counter argument that a lot of um, conservatives I won't just limit it to conservatives, but a lot of like a lot of new black, uh, uh, the new blacks, the new blacks and all of the new blacks 
there's a lot of new blacks out here that are basically saying some shit like oh but did you know that like uh you know black people sold black people did you know that black niggas sold black people that that's their talking point that's a lot of their argument and then they try to pass the blame off to the niggas that were selling niggas I agree with that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, they're definitely not more liable. It's just like you said. Everybody. And nor needs, are every, they equally liable. Are equally. Everybody needs to be at the table. Absolutely. Ne- Africa Neo don't niggas. owe us reparations. They owe us as a people internal reparations, mm-hmm. just like we owe ourselves as a people internal reparations. Here's what I want to say: mm-hmm. We are entitled to reparations. <laughs> we will get it. But let us be clear: something. No, we won't. Money isn't going to fix. Many of the problems that we have, money isn't going to stop the back and forth accusations and tearing down that's going on all over the Internet between black men and black women. Money not going to stop that. Money ain't going to make the black man love the white woman. I mean, it'll help. It's not. It's a lot of issues that it will help. I will say that, but it's not a, you know, anymore. You understand me? Money. Wait, did he say on? Nah, he didn't say that. Don't say something. Money isn't going to fix many of the problems that we That's have right. money right. isn't going to stop the back and forth accusations and tearing down that's going on all over the internet between black men and black oh, yeah, women. He said the money internet. not okay, going to stop me. that. Money ain't going to make the black man love the white woman anymore. You understand me? Money is not going to remove the self-hatred complex that so many African people have within us. There's so much that we have to do on our own that money cannot buy. So anybody who thinks that money is going to reverse... I agree with him, but the fucked up part is American slavery wasn't even just slavery. It was just dehumanizing Africans. It was just under the name of slavery. It was way worse than the definition of slavery. I completely agree with you. Traza actually spent facts for once. The psychological holocaust is insane. It does has its place, but it is not a panacea for all of our problems. And I am of the opinion that if you don't change the way we think before we get reparations, if you don't build an infrastructure for African people before we get reparations, uh-huh. you change nothing else about African people. Yeah, Charles got hacked. Can we please talk about Jerry Jones? Yes, we can. You well, recently posted well, a picture. Well, of- <laughs> okay, I I will tell you this right now. I know nothing about the Jerry Jones shit. You know what I'm saying? I do. I know it's an old nigga that says some shit or was attending some racist shit or something like that. That's all I know. I don't really know shit about Jerry Jones. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know I saw a clip of Stephen A. Smith or some shit like taking up for the nigga or saying like, why are you upset? Blah, 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 blah. But I, I, if I'm about to get context, cool. They try to slander our brother over Talk here. Talk to him. About what? Over the summer, I guess there was a, a video of you I guess uh, at the oh, Cherry Hill they Mall. To say you had, yeah, they, they tried to say you had jungle fever, doctor. Oh yeah, I saw that. Explain. Jungle fever in the mall. Okay, let me I tell you what happened. Doctor, I thought we talked to him about that already. You know, that Somebody tried to hack my phone. <laughs> no, that's crazy. That is crazy. No, no, he did not oh, just okay, say that. I thought we talked about that already. Though. Somebody <laughs> tried to hack my phone. An iPhone. It went out. My phone never went out. No. I call iPhone. That is hilarious. They say, okay, we have an appointment for you. I said, I'm in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apple. Oh, my Closest God. Closest place, Cherry Hill Mall Apple Store. No problem. I ain't got no phone. I need my phone. I go to Cherry <laughs> Hill Mall. That's the whitest Apple of, of all Apple. Yes, sir. Yes, that's the clip. That's the clip. Yes. Oh, my God. Unless we get something better. Unless we get something better, that's the clip. Oh, nah. Oh, so nah. Cherry Hill Mall. That's the clip. They work You're right. My phone is taking forever for my. No, I gotta hear that again. I'm sorry, I gotta hear that one more time. Apple, yeah. mm-hmm. Apple. Mm-hmm. Club. an iPhone. We talked to him about that already. No, that Somebody tried to hack my phone. <laughs> an iPhone. It went out. My phone never went out. I call iPhone. They say okay. I call a- iPhone. <laughs> Appointment for you. I said I'm in Philadelphia. Bro. Apple. Mm-hmm. Closest nah. place, Cherry Hill Mall Apple Store. No problem. I ain't got no <laughs> phone. I need my phone. I go to Cherry That's Hill the Mall. That's the Apple of, of all Apple. Yes, sir. So I oh go to Cherry God. Hill Mall. They working on my phone. <laughs> it's taking forever for my appointment to come up. 
I said, let me find something to do. I go get me some suits. Oh, no. Go back, get the phone fixed. I'm on my way out the mall. I'm done. Oh, no. I see him stand in the middle with incense, oils, no, I'm crystals. Crying. I'm in all that. I'm I said, fucking okay, crying. this must be a sister. Let me go over here. I'm looking through the incense. No, Young white lady come bro. around. She said, can I help you? I said, this your stand? Because <laughs> I'm like, this, you know, because this was black people stuff. You know what I mean? No, so I'm like, she said, yes, my stand. She had a little foreign accent. I said, no problem. So I buy some incense. A brother stops by. Can I take Wait, it? the white woman had a foreign accent? Okay, no, that makes sense. Get a picture, sure. I get a rock. Sister come by. Can I take a picture? Some more youth come by. Can I take a picture? Yo, calling young niggas youth? Oh, my God. I'm never that old, bro. Y'all can shit on me a lot. I'm never that old. Second of all, again, this is a prime example of a story that sounds completely fabricated, but I 100% believe because he's telling it. The white girl start looking at me like, who are you? Like, why is everybody stopping asking you for pictures? I said, I'm Dr. Um, I'm a psychologist. She and this is true. When niggas see niggas take pictures with you, then they start wanting to take pictures with you, even if they don't know who you are at all. 100%. So this sounds believable, what he's saying Pulls right now. Pulls out her phone. She said, well, let me see where you are. I said, go to YouTube, type in Umar Johnson Breakfast Club. That's exactly what I told you. <laughs> That's exactly what I told right. So she pulls out a photo. She go to Umar Johnson Breakfast Club. She said, that is you. I said, That's me. Some coons at a nearby restaurant oh God. are filming the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But when they post it, they <laughs> don't post coons. the prelude to the conversation. Mm -hmm. If they would have showed everybody stopping, they would have <laughs> knew she must have been curious about who he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut that off, and they just showed me with her phone like I'm giving her my number. Can I get your number, baby? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. All I was doing was confirming that that's who I am. Don't you know they went up there and interviewed her? No. That girl got they interviewed her all week. The people that recorded you? Negroes from YouTube ran to the Cherry Hill Mall wow. and got That's a sat down crazy. with the snow bunny. Are oh, you one of Dr. Umar's wives? Is what they were <laughs> Prelude <to>. is hilarious. <laughs> and she told the truth, though. And what I appreciate it. She said all he did was shop. I wanted to know who he was. Everybody was stopping to talk to him. He told me to pull out, go to YouTube Breakfast Club. And uh, he was just confirmed. Hey, that Dr. was it. Umar, I, don't I know, picked up hey, my bag and walked off. They didn't even show me walk off. I don't think you realize how funny it is. That's like a Dr. Umar trap. We're going <laughs> to yes, set up the engine. That is hilarious. <laughs> but when he go over there, snow bunny. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, so it, 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 it was crazy. But I'm glad she was honest because she could have. She could have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she yeah. Your said whole, tried to get at your you whole career I mean? so could have been over. I think you hate white people. You don't, I don't hate, hate white, white people. people. Yeah. I have conversations with white folks all the time. Arabs, Chinese, East Indian. I Bro, I don't trust any nigga that say I'm not racist, but call Arabs Arabs. I'm sorry. I know. I know he probably don't mean nothing by it. It's just the way it come out, bro. It's not good. I have people who watch my work <laughs> it's from It's bad, all bro. I would just stop. <laughs> it's in bad. The by an Asian who uh, <laughs> works for what do you call the security? Uh, TSA. 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 Mm -hmm. He came right over to me. I'm taking my shoes off. He said, hey, I'm a big, about 40-year-old Asian man. I'm not sure if he was Chinese or Japanese, but he said, I'm a big fan of your work. Keep on doing what you're doing. Asian. I had a group of white boys run up to me at the airport. I was <laughs> he in He named Dallas, one Texas. Asian. He take a picture. I took the picture. Why do I do that? People say, why are you taking pictures when white folks stop you? Because it's important for the world to know that my agenda is not hate. My agenda is African liberation. I'm opposed to white supremacy. I'm not opposed to white people. My priority mm, is my own people, yeah. but I have nothing against yours. I'm unapologetically African. Okay. But the problem is historically, any black man who is unapologetically African, Malcolm, Talk to him. Marcus Garvey, Stokely Carmichael, uh, he repeated <laughs> said unless they gay. He knew anybody who was that way, we will <laughs> automatically brand it as anti everybody else. That is not true. We are Africans. We are the original humanitarians of the planet Earth. We have never been against another people, but I am unapologetically committed to my own. So you and, don't and hate no, white people, you just don't. I don't hate nobody. To see black people I became them. a psychologist to help people, and in my work, I bro, I'm sorry. This is the fu having this flag behind him is so funny. It's the funniest shit in the world because I feel like the nigga dead cannot see it or he just don't know it's there. I do work with all races, just having it in the back is the funniest is shit in the world to me. Because we need the, the most help. Charity starts at home. And so therefore, I make no apologies about being for black people. I make no apologies about saying a black man has no business being with another woman, Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes. I make no apologies <laughs> about that because we got to save ourselves. What's your thoughts on that? Since you, since no, you let's go to Jerry. Let's stop you speeding now. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to Jerry. Yeah, take it slow, and nigga. Way, what, what, what Dr. Umar is saying, other the community say that and nobody has a nobody problem with says it. nothing yeah. nobody says nothing okay Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes first of all what they did was wrong you had no business having relations with another man's wife if in fact those women were married 
It's wrong. Wait. Husband, white, black. Hold on. Oh, he's talking about the newscasters? I think he's talking about the newscaster niggas. Oh. Yo, I ain't going to lie, though. I can't lie. I caught an iPhone. It's hilarious. I ain't going to lie. I saw that situation. And the Celtics coach. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean I didn't mean they were both newscasters. One, one. From what I understand, old boy, the coach, was fooling around with, you know what I'm saying? He 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 fucked up. I ain't gonna hate on the other woman that he, you know what I'm saying, he got with, but it is what it is. But the other niggas, I ain't gonna lie, they just look like a happy couple to me. Like, I don't know what his real wife looked like, but personally, I don't blame little bro. Hold on. Let me go. Let me let me go find him real quick. TJ Holmes. I think it said TJ Max. TJ Holmes. What's her name? Amy Robach. Ro- Ro- Robust. Robach. Whatever. I don't fucking know. Look at these niggas, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Look at these niggas and tell me that these niggas don't look happy as fuck. Look at these niggas. Now, I'm not saying that this is black love. But these niggas is they getting it in at the house at at the at the at the hotel. I, I mean, they getting it in at the hotel, bro. And this is the prime definition of never let your wife get in the way of your of of, of your true love. You know what I mean? I get it. I know it's fucked up. She was married too. She was married too. But at the end of the day, like I just feel the chemistry oozing between these. Look at these niggas. Look like they've been married for years. They look like they childhood friends on some shit. Why would I hate on this? They look good together. I can't be mad at this. I can't be mad at this. Amy and Ma- Amy and TJ. You you those are two names that have known each other since they were born. He on his third. Ma- okay, well I didn't know all that. I didn't know all that. They just I'm saying it looked like they got a chemistry going. They got a, they vibing. Look at these niggas every frame. Cheating is still bad. I'm not saying it's okay. Is cheating bad or is cheating just not optimal? Let's let's have a dialogue. Feel me? Now, it's not the situation that you think, okay, this is the best thing for me or my relationship, but we don't have any context. What if these niggas just got exposed and we don't even know on some real shit what they was doing or dealing with at the house? Let's have a real conversation because a lot of the time with these marriages, y'all are split up, a.k.a. separated, and y'all haven't gone public with the separation. And then you end up seeing other people and then other niggas see you seeing other people. And then, boom, all of a sudden it's an affair happening when really low key. It could have been on some. We already been separated. You know what I mean? That's not what happened. Well, okay, look, regardless, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If this is the type of chemistry I have, I'm not, look, if this is the type of chemistry I have, like, I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see it through. I'm going to see it through. Look at these niggas, bro. You can't look at these niggas and say they ain't happy. They both unemployed as shit right now. Probably never going to get cast as another on, on news an- as news anchors anywhere else ever. Professional relationship or professional careers done. But they at the house fucking up a storm. They having a biracial baby right now. 25% black. They diluting the bloodline as we speak. Umar over here chilling. Crazy. He's sitting up there shaking his head at this nigga. I get it. I get it. I understand. But fuck. Fuck. I'm not letting my wife tear my girlfriend down in this way, bro. I'm not. You can call it stupid. You can call it toxic. I'm not mad at their decision. And they look happy together. Now, his wife, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you. Look up his wife. I don't want to get her in trouble. TJ Holmes, actual wife. I don't know why I'm typing in actual, but I'm going to just type in actual. Yeah, it's not the same. You know what I mean? I like, hey, I look. I'm there's nothing wrong with her. It's just not the same. There's nothing wrong with her. It's just not the same. That's all. 
I'm not getting the same level of happiness from these images that I get from the others. That's all I'm saying. They look cool. They look awesome brother sister shit. You feel me? Awesome sibling shit. Awesome we drunk and I got to take my brother or I got to take my sister home because I'm not I'm not letting a random nigga take her home, you know what I'm saying? But like on some on some chill shit, on some other shit, bro, like You you want to look at these niggas and tell me like, "Come on, bro." Like, "Come on, bro." Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Relax. Why is what on my mind? This is looking like this is looking Wait, this is like looking at Naruto and Hinata together and then looking at a picture of Sakura. No, because Sakura don't got the type of chemistry that he Hinata been there since day one for Naruto and some shit. Sakura just not catching up and she low key. They not they not vibing. They not that same vibe. I don't even know how that's a fair comparison. These niggas look like they've been friends forever. And they finally said, yo, you know what? They these niggas, you know what? That's what they are. They're giving me the vibe that yo if we don't get married by a certain age we just gonna fuck it and get married that's what that's their vibe i've had conversations like that with friends before that's what happened here if we don't find anybody by this age we just gonna get married that's their vibe and they did it and and when you say that because you you got her you got this person as a fuck buddy the whole time like hey yo we just fucking around I love you, you love me on some chill shit. When shit not going right with your nigga, you come over here, go crazy. Shit not going right with me, I come over there, go crazy. And then we both know that we not really planning on getting married so we can marry each other low key. But he actually went through with it. I feel like they known each other in the background, in the back scenes for years, bro. I just feel like that. That This is the marriage conversation right here, bro. They gonna get married because he not letting that go. He not leaving that behind. So me personally... I feel what Dr. Umar is saying. Don't get me wrong. It's not 20% kicking. But he going to have to just shut the fuck up on this one and let niggas live. A part of black liberation is allowing black people to choose who the fuck they want to be with. Personally, I think that's the American dream. That should be the dream. So if you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? That to me is the best liberation of all. That's just me personally. I'm not going to force somebody to be with somebody they don't really want to be with if it's in the interest of just, quote unquote, being part of the blacks. Feel me? I like it. Don't get me wrong. I could be a proud black man. I'm saying this as a as a person who loves black women who and who has primarily dated black women my whole life. So you can't come at me the same way you're coming at TJ Holmes. But anyway, I'm saying like that's what the actual black liberation dream should be doing whatever the fuck you want to do without reference to or having to speak to this or uh, imaginary authoritative black god that is basically just social media uh if you do something that they don't agree with i want everybody to be loved you know what i'm saying so just, just chill out gang dj holmes doing his thing to me hey black king still Half black king, quarter black, whatever the fuck he, I don't know what's going Purple on. Purple is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Now, Nia Long one to me is just unex that's inexcusable personally. That's just inexcusable to me personally, bro. But it's even more wrong because you chose to go outside your community and do it. It's even more wrong because you chose to go into the white power structure and do it. They're, they were not chastised because they committed adultery. Celebrities do it all the time. They were not chastised for that. They were chastised for because they failed to keep in mind that white black men get the white women that other white men genuinely do not want. He's saying black men get the white women that other white men don't want. Is that what he's saying? Hold on, let me go back. Let me hear him spit real quick. Chastised for that. They were chastised for because they failed to keep in mind that white black men get the white women that other white men genuinely do not okay, want. That's what you're trying to say. Okay. You don't get the top of the line white women. You don't. You get leftovers. Look at most of our celebrities. They don't. They did not marry women who came from the richest white families. Um. I mean, based off class, sure. Based off attraction, I don't really know. It, it, attraction is so subjective. I can't really say. Um. I guess he has high tier white people in his mind when he's saying that. But if we're going based off class, I guess I haven't seen. But I don't even know too many high up white women, I guess, that 
like who who's high up as a white woman in in America? I don't know. That like that has like a uh uh what do you call it? A uh, Margot Robbie? Margot Robbie money I'm talking about money wise. He's talking about marrying into or being with like how many of these white women have like pick of the litter options when it comes to like financial shit. Like are you gonna see an Ivanka Trump with a black man? Most likely not. Are you gonna see you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. People that have like power in America or whatever, like big, big money. Kardashians don't really count. I mean, they count, but they don't. They're white passing for the most part. I, th I guess they're all white. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they are, but sure. So in this in this context, if you want to reference the Kardashian family, like all them niggas are trying to be with niggas, basically. So I don't I don't know. I don't know who else. Melinda Gates. What is she? The next uh, is she uh, Bill Gates ex wife. She got a black man, don't she? Melinda Gates is married. Uh, not married, but like she's with a black man right now, right? Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. I know she's been around the block. Sorry. I don't even know what she on, but I don't care. I know. I know. I Martha. Martha just. Uh, I just can't imagine Martha Stewart being racist. I just can't. Meryl Streep. Another one. I can't imagine being racist. But you see what I'm saying here? Like, it's only a few white women in America that I can think of that have that intense of a like a financial overbearing arc that also kind of get to pick and choose I, I i get the point i do i understand the point that he's trying to make here though i just it's hard for me to think of examples that fit what he's saying black money and white money don't behave the same new black mm. money and old white money have two totally different personalities new black money will jump on any poor white girl and make her a billionaire tiger woods <laughs> did he make someone a billionaire oh yeah tiger woods has always been married to a black uh, to a white woman hasn't he did he cheat on his white woman with another white woman, though? Or am I tripping? That's kind of crazy. I know she was sick. You're not supposed to do this to me. You ni oh. That's when he really, that's when his shit really came out. Anyway, I'm saying on this, sure, he's right. But I don't really see, again, it's hard for me to think of, like, new white money getting with old white money, too. I don't know. I, I, I Either I'm not tapped in like that, or... I just don't see who the new who the new millionaires who the new white millionaires that are getting with old white millionaire money. I don't see that. <laughs> rich white woman, rich white money doesn't operate that way. You see, the sin of Ime Udoka and the sin of T.J. Holmes is you had an affair with a white man's wife. This is a desirable white woman. Somebody loves her and is married to her, and you had the audacity to take her away from her husband being a Negro. That's why they had to be sat down. And if I could speak with Ime Udoka, I would have to ask him. On top of all that, you chose a woman from the Mormon church. What's her that family mean? is Mormon. The Mormons historically are one of the most racist Nigga, he not thinking about that. He trying to get his dick wet. That's it. Nominations. I get what he's saying though. Like all the other shit, bro. Lo hard, like long term, I get what you're saying, bro. He just wanted his dick sucked, bro. That's all it was, bro. Of the Christian religion. Did you know they did not ordain black ministers? He wasn't thinking about Mormon niggas. He definitely wasn't thinking about God or Jesus. Definitely wasn't thinking about Nia Long. He said, "Yo, dick mouth. That is it. That's all that's on my mind right now." Until 1978, their most fav famous leader, Brigham Young. He said the devil was black, and he also justified the enslavement of African people by way of the curse of Canaan. Ham was cursed for uncovering his father's uh, uh, nakedness, and as a result of that, uh, curse be the firstborn, Canaan. So the Mormon church and Brigham Young and their other leaders said that black people's skin was black, and I hear... Yeah, he said that, I remember this, uh, that black people were, the, all, all black people were the descendants of Cain, and the sin for blackness was having darker skin and whatever else he about to say it was some other shit some other technicality and shit like that but he's right it was nappy because of the curse of canaan and that justified our enslavement you think and he thought about it that deep or he was just probably hitting something i don't think he was thinking about it that but deep. here's my point if you're going to sleep with a white woman you don't go to the kkk and get i don't believe it obviously but i'm saying like that's that's that, that's that's true what are you saying what mm. you see Look at the other brother, uh, Everett, the young basketball player from Louisiana State University. June of this year, he visited his white girlfriend in Boise, Idaho. She takes him to a Mormon wedding. She should know better. 
They didn't let him in because he's black. Then he goes white water rafting with the snow bunny and three friends. They fall off the raft. Now, he's an athlete, six foot whatever. She's a white girl. She survives. He dies. Nobody looks for his body. It was a stranger who called the police and said he was missing. He turned up dead a couple days later. Another Mormon. Why did his parents let him go visit a white girl in Boise, Idaho? And why are you going to a Mormon wedding? And Ime Udoka, why are you sleeping with a Mormon woman when you look at the history of the Mormon people? You took, you took, you t you reach so crazy for that just now. Like, I get what he's saying too, though. But like, <laughs> he just he grabbed a random fucking story out of nowhere, this outlier story, and just applied it and related it to this. No nigga, I'm telling you, Ime and a bunch of other niggas have not heard this story. I'll be honest I'm with you. I'm not saying everyone, but structurally and systematically, they have been against black folks. Mm. So my goodness, if you're going to do it, find a liberal or something. You don't get a Mormon. I'm gonna let him cook you right. I'm gonna let him cook. That they did that, but they were wrong in what they were doing. But they're being punished not for adultery. They're being punished for being black men. I wouldn't go into the woods with nobody. I get what you're saying though. Specifically, white folks definitely not going into the woods with them, but. No one. I, I'm not going in the woods, period. I'm not that inquisitive. I don't want to know what the fuck is in there. I don't care. We're not going with guns. We're not hunting bears. We're not doing shit. I remember my coworkers when I used to work at a job uh, at a pizza restaurant like like eight, eight, nine years ago. These niggas invited me to go out hunting with these niggas. His wife, who would have fucked me on con like off the strength, just saying the word, invited me specifically and this nigga, and this nigga knew his wife was on some bullshit. I'm like, yo, what if she tries something and he don't agree with it, he don't like it, all of a sudden I got a crossbow in the back of my fucking head and niggas is looking for me on the news and they telling them niggas that a bear ate me. We don't know where he at. It would have been me and two other white couples and that's it. Keep in mind, I was one of two black people there. And also, I was only, it was only one black person per shift. So me and this other black person barely ever interacted because we our shifts were set up to not be together. Our set, our shifts were set up to not even be together. So we rarely even interacted. So when they invited me, they like on some join us, join us, join us, join us, join us. And I'm like, yo, am I good? Obviously, I said no. But fuck, that was crazy. That was crazy. So to your point. I would never go to the woods with white folks, but I'm just not going in general. OK, but that's a lie because my my 25th birthday wasn't my 25th or my 26th. I think it was my 26th birthday. I did go uh, to a beach, but it was kind of woods. But I didn't know in my defense. I didn't know it was kind of woods before we went there. So that was the only time, though. But it was. Hey, it is what it is. Man, yeah, I think sleeping with, with white women. With TJ Holmes, I think that they bought the white I'm him in a real way. Like they even already put out a story that he was having multiple affairs. So they're that, gonna get him. Yeah. You are not allowed to touch the white women that white men have claimed or considered to be marriage worthy. You get the leftovers. Our athletes, our celebrities, they all got leftovers. They do not get top of the crop white girls. And, and uh, he's he's talking crop at top of the crop in terms of like status or not status, but like uh, power and money, not not looks, because you can get a great looking white girl. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure he's not trying to say that. Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes made a mistake of messing with women, white women who were untouchable, made untouchable by white males. So top of the crop, white women is well, married uh, financial or status or just women that are married bloodline. OK, you mm -hmm. have to come from one of them families with them okay. names. It could I, also I be you. financial as mm -hmm. well. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yep. But white men determine who those women are. And it's normally a mix of income, status, and bloodline, as well as occupation. You follow what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Once again, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm letting him spit. But, I, again, I don't know fully uh, if there are many examples of just rich white women that are in the power. I, I, don't, I don't know. But, again, I'm not um, going against this point right now because... Yep. They're not poor. They don't come from poor means. They're not a first generation millionaires. You understand? Mm -hmm. Black men don't generally get those women. And married white women are automatically included in that by virtue that they've been claimed by a white man. I want to ask you something, Dr. Numa. For you, have you ever seen an interracial relationship that was acceptable to you? 
No interracial relationship is acceptable because we have too many black women who are unmarried. Black women are the largest population on the planet Earth. If you can't find one in America, get it from Africa. If you can't get it from Africa, go to the Caribbean, go to Canada, go to Europe. Why would a black man need to copulate, build a family with anything other than a black woman when you have so many black women available? It is okay, well, this is a problem. Okay, this is the problem because... His whole point, this whole this whole Dr. Umar shit is like its idea is on this premise of like slavery has deeply affected every person like completely. That's that's his ideology right now. At the same time, he's basically saying the circumstances that made, you know, life in America a lot harsher for black people. Um, he's basically saying that the, to ignore those circumstances or pretend that those circumstances never occurred what about those black people that have moved up the ladder, have moved out of their community for whatever it is, for whatever reason? Like, it's a lot of black people that don't have the access to black women in the spaces that they spend most of their time in. And so when you look at a lot of black women, for example, some of them end up with black men or some of them end up with white men. And oftentimes I'm not saying that you can't have a point about not one. I don't know why he's when I'm saying you, I'm not saying you can't have a point about wanting that community but at the end of the day like a lot of the positions that some black people find themselves in they don't end up being uh in a position where there are black people even available in the area he's talking about this like it's choosing food at the grocery store 100 percent. like it's not something that is just, that is as simple as you going to just grab something and then you just got it like it's not it's not that easy now if you grow up in a majority in a predominantly black neighborhood your whole life obviously it's going to be easier to be with a black woman but there are many different types of black people in this world, as I've said, and you're not going to have access to the same crop of people the whole time. For example, if you go to L.A., it's a lot of black men that end up with Hispanic women. If you go to certain parts of Michigan, it's a lot of black men that end up with a lot of different part, a lot of different types of white women. If you go to certain, if you go, especially if you go to fucking New York, that is so culturally diverse. I'm not saying that it's you can't find a black woman there, but there's so many other types of people there as well. To to try to make everybody seem like they have to be laser focused onto this blackness trope, which I think is great in in, in thought process in theory. I just don't think that it's realistic. And in the way that you're describing it, is if the people that you're quote unquote choosing is like only men have the opportunity or the option to grab these black women. He said that black women just aren't married, so it's black men's responsibility for why they're not married, and that's it. Like unless black men marry them, they just not gonna be married. They not gonna have a choice. They not gonna do nothing. I just think that's a little weird. It's a, it's, a, it's a strange take. It's like taking away a lot of that freedom that you was just talking about because you don't really view like black women as like people who have like control over their own being and in, in their own space it's all just left up to the black man to decide what it is that that happens to them ultimately and i don't like that ideology that you're putting out there right now it is an exercise in self-hatred there's no way not many black people in australia not gonna lie i would never go to australia so i completely understand that the problem with umar is that uh, because of black trauma he strips black people of their autonomy which you should never do of course and when you do that, you pigeonhole people into a lot of the time being around people you don't even like. It's okay to not like some black people. A lot of you niggas stink. And I don't mean that literally. I'm just saying, like, a lot of you niggas suck as people. I think that's another part of black liberation is understanding that black people can just be shit. Y'all can just be shit people. I want that I want that normalized because I don't want white people seeing this type of content and being like, oh, I can't treat black people the same way I treat everybody else. No, I would love that because the last thing I want is black or not black, but white progressives or white liberals coming in on some on their knees type shit. Treat me like I'm a fucking slave still that's on display that they have to like carefully rub every now and again and buff to make sure that I'm still good. Like, I, I just I just think it's weird. I think it's weird. Thank you for allowing me. What do you mean allowing you? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? But that's white disconnect. They will never know what to do with anyone that ain't white. A hundred percent. I get you. But still, it's just. I want I, I don't want black people to be anything other than treated normally. 
that's that's my that's my end goal for black folks i want to be treated normally the same as everyone else but i realize that everyone else is still treated like shit everyone else is still treated like shit so i still want it to be a baseline for how humans are treated and i want black people to get to a point where they catch up to where everyone else is treated so that we can all equally be treated like shit and then we can all work toward a common goal as just people as opposed to black people white people asians blah 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 that's just my thought on it right now maybe he'll bring up another point however they need to know their boundaries and the problems is that if their boundaries draw anytime they criticize people in our community you can hear the racist rhetoric slip through all the time all the time i see it all the time the, the any there's not I, I forgot what i said i forgot what i said there's plenty of white people that aren't racist that say racist shit there's more people i think there's more white people who aren't racist that say racist shit that's what i think way to get around it do you think kanye west if he had a black woman that say and think racist shit then 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 those that overtly just call you an n-word obviously I and mean, things would be different oh absolutely I think Kim Kardashian used him. Nah, and the I'm fact white. that they're making that man pay $200,000 a month in child support when both he and the wife are billionaires are absolutely uh, ridiculous. I think they want to break him. I think they want to break him. And although I don't agree with the way in which Kanye articulated. Have I seen what Destiny said to Speed and Kai? I did see that. I did see that on my Twitter today. And a lot of niggas DM me about that and asked me what I thought about it. And I'm going to talk about that when he get done making this point. Some of his thoughts. I appreciate the fact that he was the first black man since Michael Jackson to speak truth to power, to specifically identify certain communities of Europeans who have exploited gangster rap, black entertainers, and other people since its inception. And nobody has called them out. He's the first to do it since Michael Jackson. But when well, he's doing the same thing that Kanye is doing, basically. Like, I get what he's saying, but at the end of the day, like, you can't say it's all Jewish people at the end of the day. That's just not the truth. Like, you're, 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 that, that is the anti Semitic rhetoric that Kanye was crit criticized for. That's it. That and he was a Nazi praiser, Nazi apologist, whatever the fuck. When Michael did it, Gunther, your name is Gunther. I'm not addressing you. He wasn't in his prime. Kanye did it in his prime. I can't give Kanye no respect because I've never seen a black man seek more white validation than Kanye was. Well, that's the issue. That is, a, that that is, is one of the, the most self-hating black Kanye men on the Kanye is not choosing a side. One day, it's about saving our people. The next day, you want to date with another snow bunny. One day, He's it's about helping the old hey, You got to be the consistent. The next day, you're campaigning for Donald Trump. One day, it's about being independent. The next day, I'm hearing about you going into business with some with uh, some white man. Make up your mind. I think Kanye is trying to f figure out where he is, but he got to make up his mind because you're too health to skelter. And at this point, I'm going to be honest with you, although I appreciate Kanye's honesty, I think most of his agenda is about Kanye. And I'm going yes. to say that because when I look at our black billionaire class, whether it's Kanye, whether it's Oprah, whether it's Jay-Z, whether it's anymore. Tyler Perry, even if he's no longer in that class, none of them, LeBron, Puffy, none of them have built an independent black institution for the black community anywhere in this country. And I, this, 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 I want to strangle him right now. But on, on, a, on some good shit, though. I want to strangle him, but on some good shit. He's speaking right here, right here, right there. He said nothing wrong right here. He said nothing wrong. I don't know about LeBron. You got to inform me about LeBron. If it's true, it's true. Um, but this. There cannot be. I don't want to hear songs from Jay-Z and, 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 and that track with Jay-Z and Pharrell still bothers me to this day because these niggas got, got on this track talking about you just got to work more hours. You got to stack more shows. You got to put the work in. These were the niggas that was really pissing me off right now. Because not only did black people help you build your entire fucking career by like basically crowdfunding your shit, and you having to take deals from other white people in general. Um, when you finally get to this position, you come back down and preach down the ladder, basically telling them to work harder on some dumb shit. And then most of the time when I look at black billionaires, they don't do shit. But at the end of the day, that's what that, that's again, that's again the point that we're at. We have to stop so so easily identifying black with good and saying this person is in a position of power i should listen to them i should support them i should do xyz no the person is just a billionaire that's it that's it it's another billionaire it's another person with a lot of money they don't have your best interest at heart they got to this position off of a lot of probably unethical business practices that's all you need to know that's all you need to know 
I don't take those niggas serious. When you get to that high of a level, and then I look at the, the condition of the same people that you preach to all the time, make these rap songs about, I don't give a fuck about what you're saying. I think Jay-Z is a great rapper. Do I think in terms of like doing anything for black people, he's 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 on that level? No, obviously, obviously not. Obviously not. He and his family benefit. I think that's great. Go ahead. Bless your family. Have fun with your generation and your dividends. Split that off to your family and shit like that. He not doing nothing for regular black folks. It is what it is. Y'all are a part of that same upper echelon and you're going to stay up there while at the same time pretending as if you're doing all you can all you can for black people. That's all it is. I completely agree with his point here. 100 percent. Now, again, you inform me on um, almost said Donald Trump, LeBron James. You inform me on that because uh, I know he did a lot of money for I don't know if he got a school. I don't know what it is that LeBron got. I know he did a lot of like philanthropic shit. I don't even know if I said that right. That, that, that's my bad. He does. Okay, he got a school. Nice. Um, but back to what I was saying, because somebody asked me about the Destiny shit. Hold on. Can somebody li- link me a clip of what of what this nigga said? Hold on, real quick. If I could paraphrase, right? We need communists. <laughs> if I could paraphrase, um, I know it's fuck him, right? But if I could paraphrase, what he basically said was it's a it's a i don't know i don't know if he said it's a wave or if it's a lesion i think it was a lesion it's a lesion of new black streamers right let me see if i could i, I gotta find a clip i saved okay. myself not I one did. how many lashes would kanye, <laughs> get? kanye would probably get wait wait what country not one how many lashes would kanye get kanye what would are probably you get why did i come in here bro I'm still working on Kanye. No, no, no. I'm not saying Destiny likes Ben Shapiro. I'm just saying whenever I see Ben Shapiro, I'm gone. I don't care in what context I'm gone. Lash count. Lashes is fucking insane. What did I come back to? Because I want to see where he ends up. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. need him to make up his mind and then stay there. Okay. And I need him to be a little bit more articulate with what he says, because although I think Kanye is on the right track, he's not articulating himself well enough. He's not controlling his public narrative. So when I do interviews like this or any interview, I go out of my way to be careful with my wording okay. so nobody can try to use it against me later. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to try to control your narrative and oh, he will bad. get on a platform and say some things that he may not even believe just for the shock value and you're now giving the media the opportunity to brand you something that you are not. That's even I worse need- to me though. If you don't if you don't even have no real intention or you don't even know what the hell you're saying, that's so anti-intellectual. Well, the issue is Kanye, I think he's very brilliant, but I also think he's dealing with some unaddressed mental health issues That as is well. true. That is true. You said none of them have built institutions. Um, and I, and, 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 and I, I would not put them on the same level as a Kyrie Irving because I believe I Kyrie is 100% genuine in his thinking. I think he's very thought out, and I think Kyrie does a good job of controlling his narrative. And I think that community that tried to destroy him – could be accused of being hypocritical because Jeff Bezos, the $139 billion owner of Amazon, has just issued a statement a few days ago. They're not removing the DVD. Oh, no, that wasn't There's, Jeff Bezos. That was the, other, that was the, uh, the current the CEO, CEO of Amazon. CEO. Okay, yeah. but Jeff Bezos is still the owner, isn't he? Uh, he's got a percentage <laughs> in it. But it was the current. The, the person hey, yo. The was, yo, I swear to God, bro, if I ever am spitting like this ever in my life and a nigga correct me, I'm shooting him in the face. You do not do this when I'm spitting. Come into the middle of me spitting and then be like, nah, actually you wrong on everything you just fucking said. Don't do that, bro. This is the anti-blackness, bro. This is the, he's showing it, Charlemagne showing it right now. You gotta let me rock. You gotta let me rock. Damn it. Now he gotta read, he gotta redo his whole little shit. Current CEO. Okay, current CEO, Jeff Bezos, whoever. Amazon is not pulling it. Why niggas like shoots? <laughs> DVD. They have not been c- c- uh, uh, accused of being anti-Semitic. They have not been accused of being racist. They have not been accused of being a hate monger of any other people. Now nah, he's sweating for real because like, fuck, how I get out of this? So if, Ky- if, if Kyrie can be accused of all that for sharing a video that he was not in, how is it that Amazon gets none of the smoke when they said they're not going to pull no, the video? Smoke. We no, had, we, yeah, they begin smoke. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Black was up. Uh, Jonathan Green Greenblatt Black was here okay. yesterday, and I asked him that same question. Honestly, I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, I did see majority of the flag from like like people obviously talking about anti-Semitism coming from or mainly going at you know Kanye and then trickling over into Kyrie and him having to apologize and. Uh, I didn't really see anybody giving that much backlash to Amazon, to be honest. Like, they're saying that there was a backlash. I didn't see any of it. What did he say? I said, 
and he said they have been giving him the smoke. They, they wrote him, the smoke. They they, gave they wrote him letters. The same thing they did. They wrote him a letter. But, but they, they tried to destroy Kyrie's career. Not no damn letter. But they also said that it's well. They okay. The issue with what he's saying though is a lot. It's a lot easier to destroy someone's like social image. So with Kyrie and with Kanye, there's a face that they can apply this anti-Semitic rhetoric to that gets people to have like a very, you know, uh, like ridiculous a reaction to it, basically. With Amazon, for the most part, people aren't going to look up the current owner, CEO, uh, CFO, executive, like all this other shit. So there is not much room or not many places to put that anger or like what are you going to do at amazon are you going to stop buying their shit are you going to say it online like there's really no one to go at so with these people it's easier for their social image to take a hit but amazon you don't have that face to apply it to you could apply it to jeff bezos but at the end of the day uh, he was just wrong on who the fuck is even allowed to pull the shit so i don't know illegal uh in what's but i still think they should be getting massive flag don't get me wrong in germany, in germany. In germany. that's a country in, in germany the country to actually have that i guess so in germany because of the denazification yeah. of germany i forgot how he worded it i think he was saying that the but amazon is global that's one country yeah, yeah, that's why so because they can't sell it in germany it's no, they, acceptable they, they, no they don't want it up period but yeah. they but you know they but where is the media campaign by them to crucify amazon the way they crucified kanye uh, excuse me Kyrie, Kyrie for sharing the video that amazon is making millions of dollars off i, I will say that's this, hypocritical i will say this dr umar i feel like sometimes we can't we, be selective moralists no, I'm with you, but i think sometimes we as in pe black mm -hmm. people on social media make these stories bigger because if we want it like the brett Favre situation uh -huh. amazon if we talked about those situations like we talk about other things we would create those campaigns but the white media made kanye's excuse me Kyrie's situation an issue so if you're going to make it an issue for Kyrie, white media make it an issue for amazon white media i mean the white media did report on it when when the adl report it didn't get the same energy no, the same i think energy. that's it did not get the I, same I, I energy really think it's a double standard i think that's because of what we talk and, about and anybody really who, anybody who practices selective morality whether you're european jew whether you a revolutionary pan-africanist whether you're a socialist a christian a muslim a hebrew Selective morality is hypocrisy Because what I'm saying If Envy does it, it's wrong mm -hmm. And he should be punished If Charlemagne does it, it's okay Amazon is still selling it They have yet to be branded by the ADL Or anybody else that's anti-Semitic That's hypocrisy that, that's, what I, that's one of the questions it's hypocrisy. I, That's one of the questions I asked Jonathan Greenblatt I said, you know, it feels like um, when, He's not wrong when, when, when we do It is what about ism, but he's still not wrong Something there's consequences for yes. it. So I asked him, how do you punish that level of white privilege? How do you punish a Donald They're Trump? They're not going to punish Carlson it because at the end of the day, white supremacy requires commitment and loyalty from all groups of white people. They may have their internal differences, but at the end of the day, they all agree that black people must be kept in their place. The Kyrie and Kanye issue was more about suppressing free speech for heterosexual black males than it was about anti-Semitism or anything like that. Uh, now you're losing me. Now you're losing me. Now you're losing me. Now I'm lost. Now I'm lost. Now I'm lost. Now Look I'm at lost. Tiffany Cross. She said something on your show. Mm -hmm. They cut her. They made uh, Jalen Rose take back what he said about the fact the woman at the heart of the Ime Udoka scandal has never been exposed. She cheated on her husband. Why is Ime Udoka all over the media, but the white woman who cheated on her husband is not all over the media? It's a double standard. Well, I don't think it's a double standard. I think one just has clearly more power in the situation. If he's the uh, head coach, then, yeah, he's going to you know, obviously have more eyes on him. So <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, I don't know who the, who the woman that he slept with was. So I, I don't know, but if he's the coach, then niggas know him. And we are not calling out the double standard. If wrong is wrong, it should be wrong for everybody. This is not low. about right or wrong. This is about suppressing the First Amendment lost you freedom at of speech rights of heterosexual black males who do not endorse the European narrative. No, I, that's what it's I'm about. Not against any what is the European narrative? Is he talking about gay again? Yeah, that you said, the only thing I push back on is, man, I do not like seeing people prop up Kanye West, bro. Because Kanye West is the most anti-black Negro out here. And I do not like when people just... Why do you buy... say that? Why do you say he's so anti-black? Look at him. 
Look at who he chooses to be with. And, and even when he had those billion-dollar companies, what was under the hood of those companies, Dr. Umar? Where was his black staff? I agree. Where was his black leadership? I agree. You know, where and that's his- why right now, as I just said a minute ago, I believe Kanye's agenda is what's best for Kanye. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's about what's best for black people until he shows me something else. Mm-hmm. I really believe he did what he did to get freed of them contracts because he has the brand and the platform and the status now where he could probably make his own sneakers and make his own music and probably sell as much, if not more, than I he did believe before. That, I believe You're giving so. that man way too much. No, credit. I believe so. I, I believe, believe so. Well, Kanye's let, big. Well, let me ask I you about uh, Charlemagne's uh, football team, the we, Dallas Cowboys. Yes. And the owner. Jerry Jones. Listen to this. Here's another example of selective morality. Okay. How is it Brett Favre, and I'm coming to Jerry, mm-hmm. stole about $70 million of poor people's money from Mississippi to help his daughter's college build a volleyball field or something? Well, it wasn't that much, though. It was a lot. It, it was, was up there. Yeah, it was millions. It was millions. It wasn't 70? It was, it was millions. Was I thought it was like 5 million. Wasn't it 5 million? Doubles. It was millions. It was multi millions. Okay. It wasn't seven, yeah. Anyhow, he don't get indicted, he don't get charged. No Eight million, charges okay. are being brought against Brett Favre. If a black man did the same thing, you and I know he gets crucified. Mm-hmm. Look at the double standard and the selective morality. Now let's come to Jerry. Can you give me an example of a black man stealing five to ten million dollars of like welfare money, quote unquote, uh, and they went like to jail for it? Jerry Jones. This is the same Jerry Jones who never hired a black coach. Same Jerry Jones during the Colin Kaepernick protest of 2016 said, if any of my players are caught, quote unquote, disrespecting the American flag by taking a knee, they not going to play on my team no more. This is that Jerry Jones who never stood up against any of the racism in the state of Texas. And he gets caught in the picture. September the 9th, 1957. No, I'm not saying he wrong. I'm not saying defend Brett Favre on that. I'm just saying. I'm just wondering. North Little Rock High School. And then he commits three lies. I feel like I feel like a lot of the time black people don't steal that big. I feel like white people are the ones who do like those major, huge, multi-million dollar, hundred million dollar, fifty million dollar, ten million dollar like busts. I feel like that's they kind of lame. These niggas working on yeah heists and shit like when that. When asked about this picture, he was part of a mob to deny a group of African Americans entry into North Little Rock High School. He says he was just there to be curious. He says neither he nor any of the other white boys or people there knew what they were going to get into. That's lie number one. Jerry Jones had already admitted that his coach told him not to go nowhere near that there would be trouble there. So how is it you didn't know what you was going into and nobody else there knew what you was going into when your coach told you it might be trouble and stay away from it? That was an absolute lie. And then when he was asked whether he regretted being there, he never answered the question. Where is Roger Goodell? Where's the NFL? Why isn't he being given a list of demands just like Kyrie was given, being given a list of demands? And check this out. To make matters worse, guess what else happened on September 9th, 1957, DJ Envy? What's that? President Dwight D. Eisenhower signs the 1957 Civil Rights Bill creating the uh, Civil Rights Commission within it. What if a nigga just come out of nowhere right now and say, <laughs> what if a nigga come out here right now and say, actually it was 1958? I, I will have to turn Department off the of video, Justice. bro. I'd have to First turn off the video. First act of civil rights legislation since 1875. Jerry Jones and Actually. the rest of the kids, they knew that. They were there to repudiate that presidential signing. They were also there because what happened five days before that? What happened on September 4th, 1957? It was three days, actually. Was that the ten, bombing? The Little Rock 10 yeah, the, yeah. tried to get into Central Rock Central uh, High School, and Governor Forbes of Arkansas instructed the National Guard not to let them in. They were called the N-word. They were spit on. They were beat on. They were threatened. They were terrorized by white folks five days earlier. Jerry Jones knew exactly what he was going to get into. The Supreme Court just outlawed school desegregation three years earlier on uh, May 17th, 1954. He knew exactly why he was going. He was going to stop uh, black people from coming into North Little Rock. Now, Stephen A. Smith says he th- uh, Jerry Jones don't deserve this. He don't deserve to be held accountable. For I didn't know I don't, I don't I didn't see I never saw the full Stephen A shit I never saw the full Stephen A shit um but I did think it was crazy I that it was like the way it was presented to me is if they, he was defending uh Jerry Jones in that situation I didn't fully see it but like I mean that's not the first time Stephen A Smith has said something really questionable about that type of shit but his it, it, part it is. And nigga said Stephen who supporting 
one of the most racist events in American history, which was the desegregation of America's schools. He shouldn't be held accountable. Stephen A. says, since this happened 65 years ago, he should get a pass. How many because lashes was, for Stephen A. Smith? Stephen A. is probably up to 100. <laughs> How many lashes is so insane? That's such an insane question to ask, bro. Jones has always had extreme white privilege from growing up with Jim Crow South. What would have forced him to rethink his racist upbringing, biases, and values, his millions of dollars, or his billions? Yeah, like, I, I don't I don't know why people think that when the when the 65-year-old thing, like, like Stephen A. Smith saying, oh, yeah, that happened 65 million, or Toss said 65 million, 65 years ago, as if he doesn't still hold and maintain those values. Like, what makes you think that anything has changed? Nothing has forced his ideology or his mindset to have changed, so why are you defending that? 150,000 lashes right now for his cooning. But listen. If Jerry Jones get a pass because he's 14, why didn't Emmett Till get a pass? He was 14. Tamir Rice, Ohio, he was 12. Where his pass at? What about the brother? Go I've, I've, though, those are very different situations. Wrong. The ones that you're mentioning right now, very, very wrong. But I those don't. I don't think that the, the comparison works. Of Port Mississippi, two months ago. Jaheem, Jalen, I'm forgetting his name, shot in the head coming out of a dollar store with his hands up. Where was his pass? Trayvon was 17. Where was his pass? Look at all the young black boys who are tried as adults in America's prisons right now serving time in adult prisons under the age of 17. Where they pass at, Stephen A? Why are we protecting privileged white men? And you know what makes it so sad? Jerry Jones don't even have to defend himself. He got saying. black men yeah. who will jump up. Did you see Michael Irvin? Okay, I get what you're saying, and and that Jerry Jones shit is crazy. He he just he not on trial, like he didn't uh, publicly. He didn't publicly commit a, a commit a crime. And I'm not saying that the that the other examples that you gave did. I'm not saying that they did. They didn't. But I'm just saying in this instance, like the police aren't gonna go to Jerry Jones' house. They're not gonna intervene. They're not gonna like. What are they gonna do to him? I don't. I'm confused. Nah, people mad Jerry Jones. Jerry hasn't been racist to Stephen A. So he can't call him. <laughs> This Uncle Remus, Michael Irvin says, oh, he wasn't at the front of the line. So because he wasn't at the front of the line, he less racist than the ones who's at the front. Oh, he don't look like the guy. With He's saying that black people are standing up for him. What? What, what point? What point is he making? No, I'm confused. I don't I, I just don't get the other two being brought up or other three being brought up in this in this context. With the cigarette in his mouth, Jerry Jones is a righteous man and a great man. All white people were that way back in the day. This is Michael Irvin. All white people were that way back in the day. So we supposed to get Jerry Jones a pass. There's nothing worse. How many lashes for Michael Irvin? Michael Irvin get about five thousand lashes for okay. that. <laughs> no black man should ever volunteer himself, Stephen A. Smith and Michael oh Irvin, God. to play defense attorney for a white man. Wait, Jerry what did you just say? <laughs> I'm sorry, little dumpster, bro. He should at the very least hold a presser and answer in-depth questions about what he's been through to change. He has plenty of evidence to point to him still being racist. Why there is nothing forcing him to do a press conference answering in-depth questions about how he feels toward black people and why he was in attendance at that thing however many years ago. No, there's no incentive for him. He should shut the fuck up and let other niggas like, like Umar is saying right now defend him and, and let people pretend that he's not a racist and he did a bad thing however many years ago. There's no reason for me to come out and be on some, huh, huh. I should come out and say something about this and hella niggas is defending me or I'm old as fuck. Don't nobody give a fuck. He don't care. As an NFL owner that uses black men to make money, he should. No, he shouldn't. That's a bad idea. That's horrible PR. Like, I think that morally, sure. Like, if you want to do that, but he, that, why would he do that? That's terrible. You get a thousand lashes for that take. Jones ain't thinking about black folks. He has yet to speak up on social district justice issues. He is a racist and he should be forced to sell the team. But it's not going to happen. Why? Because it would take the play. Hey, yo. This is going to be bad. It's going to be a real bad thing to add to the stream. But I'm going to add a lash to the soundboard. I'm going to add a lash to the soundboard. And any time a nigga say some shit that I don't agree with, whoopsh, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not defending him, but his point is that those black boys didn't have their fair shot. And Jerry Jones does, even though he's a rich white man. 
I get what you're saying, but I'm I'm lost at the context. I do get what you're saying 100 percent. I'm just lost at the context. Are you saying that the racism is that uh, even in death, even with the severity of these situations, these black boys didn't get a fair shot? And even outside of like the criminal justice system in an in a, in a area where police aren't even involved, where there isn't even any violence involved, that Jerry Jones is still getting people caping for his racist comments. If that's what you mean, then cool. I get what you're saying, but I still don't. I just don't like the context in which they're being added in. I, 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 like I said, I could see his point, but I'm just a little confused on it. You know what I mean? Why am I getting lashes? Continuous everyday lash. No, nah, y'all are just in the BDSM, whatever the fuck that is. Y'all just y'all are in the rough shit. Y'all like rough play, and you're not gonna take all this like weird aggression out on me. It's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, and it is what it is. You're gonna have to get yours a different way, unless. Unless, you know what I'm saying, I decide to indulge one day and then I take specifically one of you and decide to experiment on you for a little bit. But that's going to be up to me. That's not going to be up to y'all. Like It is what it is. You can't tell me nothing. Wait a minute. Wait, why do I have to vote? Can I just not vote? Fine. I'm going to go with a th- I won't go with 100. That's all I get. That's all I get. Players of the NFL to protest to force them out. And we already see that our NFL athletes okay. and our NBA athletes don't have enough courage. They're more concerned with money than they are about the movement. And that's why I'm disappointed in Deion Sanders. Hold on one second. I don't think oh, there's no God. defense. He's switching it. Oh, oh yeah, hey, yo. He talking about Deion? We coming. I know, I know. If he talking about Deion, we coming. I don't think there's no defense for uh, Jerry Jones. And there's no whatsoever. defense for Stephen A. Smith and Michael Irvin defending him either. Let that white man speak for himself. And, and I, I like what y'all James... don't take up for black people like that. Stephen A., you threw Kyrie under the bus. Shannon Sharp, you threw Kyrie under the bus. But soon when a white man messed up, and Shannon didn't defend Jerry Jones, but Stephen did, and Michael did. Soon when a white so why'd you bring up Shannon? Man, make a mistake. Every every black man in sports media want to be defense attorney for white folks, but have no problem throwing black athletes under the and, bus. And I like what Jay Williams said that you know. Jay... Shout out to Jay Williams. Yeah, Jerry Jones should be forced. To denounce uh, anti-black racism, and he hasn't, and he should discuss what he's learned over the past. He ain't learned years. nothing. He's a privileged white man. He just as racist now as he was then. Listen, I agree with him. I've been studying psychology my whole life. I got a doctorate in it. I got three master's degrees in it. I got two certifications in it. You know what they tell you in psychology? What's that? that the human personality is largely fixed by the age of five. Five, five. Jerry Jones was fourteen. If you're going to tell me that Jerry Jones is fun, that is a terrible take. What? Who the fuck said that? That is an awful fucking take. Fundamentally a different person now at 80 than he was at 14. You're basically saying he the same nigga now at 80 than when he was five. What the fuck are you talking about? That's really stupid. You could just say, A, he did some racist shit when he was 14, 15 years old, and there's been no incentive for him to change or address any of that problematic shit up until that point or up until this point, And he's likely still the same, if not worse than trying to make this take about, oh, yeah, five years old. You're going to be the exact same personality wise at five years old than 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 you are at 30, 40, 50, like that. I don't think that, bro. Come on. Like five is a little crazy personality wise. I don't know. Let me know what major critical life ex- is scientifically backed. I'm saying even if it's a science fact, that's just something I don't believe. It, it's just something I don't believe. Like, I, I don't I don't understand that, to be honest. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that it's not true that science hasn't told him that, even though it's weird for him to go in and out of referencing science. But for me, I just don't think that's true. I, I think that's a kind of crazy thing. If it's a hypothesis, I don't think it's a they, I don't know. I don't think science would ever say it as a fact when there are so many outliers today. I, I, what, what was I doing? When I was five. Nigga, I was I was I don't even remember what I was doing when I was five, bro. I have no idea. I barely remember. Bro, that's the point. How the fuck would I have a... Oh, yeah, my bad. Wait, I muted that? Oh, my God. It's been muted for, like, hours, bro. I'm so sorry. Like, if I don't even remember half of what I was doing at five, how the fuck would my personality be the exact same at that? I just... I, I can't see that, bro. I can't see that. Oh, hold on, hold on. I was probably stealing doors in Detroit. I, I I could try to remember. Oh, I had two girlfriends when I was five. All right, true story. I remember proposing 
to my first girlfriend uh, and I got on one knee in front of the whole class. I gave her either a ring pop or a candy ring, something like that. I have a picture. If I showed you this picture, bro, I will never beat the Mr. Bitches allegations. I will never beat the allegations. I took a picture with both my girlfriends on the side. I was sitting there chilling. Oh, my God. I had this cute little suit on. It was all brown or gray or some shit like that. They was both taller than me. I, I was I, I, I've always been living out my dream. I've always been living out my fucking dream. Oh, I need to find that picture. If I find a picture, I'm going to show it to you next time I come on stream. I'm going to show it to you immediately. I swear to God. Oh, my God. That was such a good time. We had so much fun. We was a cool little couple for like a cool little like year. Oh, my God. Niggas couldn't tell me shit. Niggas couldn't tell me nothing. But uh, the, the point I was trying to make was that um, when I was five, I was doing, you know, I'm saying a whole bunch of shit. I wasn't making up stories, but I'm saying that's not me now. I wouldn't want have I wouldn't want to have two women now. Well, okay, I don't want to say it like they were women back then. I'm just saying like now. I'm saying I wouldn't want to have two pieces of anything now at this point. You know what I'm saying? Polymorius King, look, chill, chill, chill. I'm gonna show you the pick. I'm gonna show you the pick, and when I show you the pick, you're gonna get off dick. That's what you're gonna do. Experiences Jerry Jones went through that transformed the way that he thinks. Nothing at all. People saying, well, we got to give him credit. Dak Prescott talking about, look at his resume since then. Look at his resume Damn. since then. You Dak lost Prescott. a year at that age. Props to your younger self. Ha ha. Yeah, I was, chill I was chilling. I was chilling. We went to a, it was funny though. We went to a Catholic school at the time. So that's what made it a little bit more difficult too. And I had this evil ass teacher, Miss Nancy. Oh, I hated her so much, bro. My sister and my mom would actually scare me by saying her name. And I'm like, yo, nigga, stop. I'm like, yo, stop. This lady was evil as fuck. Miss Nancy. Oh, my God. I hate that bitch. Where's she at now? I hope she's doing bad. He ain't done nothing to help black folks. And Jerry Jones ain't thinking about helping black folks. I, 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 I don't like what people say because he didn't hire a black coach. though. Because just because he hired a black coach don't mean anything. I do agree. But at least it shows you are at least concerned about how racism looks on your resume. Jerry Jones is not even concerned about how racism looks on his resume. How many lashes should Charlamagne get <laughs> for being a Cowboy fan still? I like football. You an Eagle fan? You like e Eagles? Nah. I'm not watching no football, no NBA no more. I'm done. What? I'm officially done, brother. We cannot. Hey, I agree with him. I do. I completely agree with this take because it's a whole. It's it's crazy how there was so much talking, all this shit about like black this, black this, and then y'all niggas go on and you continuously watch the NBA and the NFL. I'm not saying I don't understand, but I'm completely understanding why he don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. And it's not for that reason. I genuinely don't find interest in it like that unless it's a huge game. But just in general, I can, I can, I can completely get down with not watching a single, another football game, another NBA game. I can completely get down with that. Be for the black liberation struggle and support white corporations and systems that systematically practice and defend white privilege and white racism against black people. What about all those what brothers they that did played the sport? <laughs> Nigga said my Ravens going crazy. Fuck that. What about them? They just there to get it back. They're not protesting. They're not doing nothing. They're not building. Some of those brothers protest. Okay. Not doing much. Okay. Show me a rich athlete who built a relevant independent black institution in this country. I feel Give the me way one. about the And NFL, let me tell you what they are. We have way more power in the NBA. Mm, yeah, you're right. You're right. Independent okay. school. Don't give me no charter school. Charter okay. school is a public school. Don't give me no charter LeBron school. James in the school he built? That LeBron's is a public school, it Indy. Is, but, but it has his name on it. But you know LeBron speaks up for black issues. I didn't ask you about speaking. Let me go mm -hmm. back to my question. Mm hmm my question was, name me a black celebrity or entertainer who has built a relevant, independent black institution. But is that, School. I the, agree. But, bank. But is that the supermarket? Yeah. <laughs> you say you ain't got the answers. I'm confused, though. Um, I'm probably just uninformed on this. What is the difference between it being like a public school? Why is he mentioning that? There's something that I don't know. The one, hospital that's all that manufacturing distribution it's the heart of a community charlemagne take care of the major problems we got just because lebron james got in front of a microphone because white people are allowed the government controls public schools public funding okay 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 funded by taxes school for black people yeah, he got his weird private academy going. Rick Ross has a... F 
Why did you just throw that random ass fact? Rick Ross has a farm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, sure. Okay, that's 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 fine. And, and, and undid what he did a few weeks ago, and I want to give LeBron some props. I appreciated his comments about Jerry Jones and comparing that to the way in which they tried to uh, castrate Kyrie. Shout out to LeBron. But now LeBron don't pull a Shannon Sharp and a Stephen A. Again, a lot of people don't know who the fuck Jerry Jones is. Like, I cannot lie, bro. It's all about attaching a face to the crime. If people cannot find the face that committed quote unquote crime, no one's going to make outrage about it or direct their outrage toward the person. He's just it, it, it's, it's beneficial that Jerry Jones is 80 plus and doesn't give a fuck about social media. You're seeing the criticism for Kyrie via social media. Now, how do you reprimand a man that has that much power in the NFL? How do you do that? How does he get reprimanded is the question. Hey, and right after you do something positive or say something good, you take it. You have to be living under a rock to not know who Jerry Jones is. No, I'm saying, can you attach the the the, the name? Can you attach um, the crime to the face? Right now. And I'll touch that nigga. It's going down in here. I'm with the money team. Appreciate the sub, too. Back by going right back to the Django character you understand he got to be okay well i can't and i think a lot of people can't and i think he old as fuck and i think since he doesn't utilize social media he doesn't care about the sphere you're not going to see criticism for him via social media consistent speech is not enough when you're worth billions to whom much is given in the much is expected how many lashes Wait, I will how many lashes should umar get for not building this school he's been talking about for like five years he already addressed that earlier on he said the school is in the works and they just working on the electricity okay calm down if you're a billionaire talking so talking how, so how can y'all co-sign kanye so much he don't do that kanye All does I, not pour back into the black kanye people. spoke a significant truth to a significant white power but he don't pull back to and drunk chatting after thanksgiving dinner yes I like it though. You know what I mean? You just sit back and you watch. It's the most entertaining thing in the world to me. Black, black people. I agree. I just LeBron said that. have infrastructures full of black people making I'm going to ask you again. What institution. Oh shit, not the hand on the table. It's getting serious. That's relevant, has been built by a black athlete or celebrity this century. I need an answer. But you just mean school banking and. Relevant. Why my uncle's not this smart? <laughs> Facts. Yo, when I was younger, my uncles used to argue, bro. I would watch these niggas argue over, like, whether or not you should wear the condom or, like, how big. Like, they was arguing over some dumb shit. I remember my uncle one time, he came in the house with a new Samsung phone. And this nigga said, this shit waterproof. And I'm like, nigga, no, it's not. This nigga decided to put the shit underneath a faucet and just run the water on it and look at me in my face, dead in my face, and say, see? I'm like, nigga, you're not supposed to use it like that. Just because you can use it underwater, they're not telling you to put it under under a fucking running faucet. You dumbass. Nigga just knew he just, nigga just thought he bodied my shit. Like, nigga, that's not how you're supposed to do that. He just said it. See, that's crazy, ain't it? That's crazy. You dumb nigga. Okay. LeBron James started a uh, movement against voter disenfranchisement walk through the streets of brooklyn walk through the streets of harlem walk through the streets of the bronx walk through <laughs> the streets of queens walk through the streets of staten island and ask black people what are the top five problems black people have in america i promise you voter suppression ain't one <laughs> voter suppression right. ain't one but how do we on, get here if we want to solve our problems, we got to get serious and black athletes have been cooning for far too long sure I know. Black entertainers, black athletes, a lot of black folks. Yeah, you, you right. You know, you know, you know, you're not chatting. They're oh, more concerned brothers, about money I, I know than got, making a difference. I, I know we gotta go, but Dion saying as you were talking about Dion. Oh Sanders, yeah, uh -huh. completely Dion. forgot about him. We coming. You've been texting me about this all week. Talk to me about Dion, Doctor Umar. I, I am surprised that Doctor Umar hasn't said anything about John Legend, bro. Like out of all the niggas 
that you could say something about, John Legend is the most egregious of the niggas. Before you get into it, you know, Charlemagne gave Donkey the day to people that would criticize him. I know. That's right. The, and I'm um, coming right at it. Let's go. And, let's go. And, and, oh. I'm coming. Oh, he coming. He coming. Oh, my God. He coming. Oh, my God. It's all coming full right circle. Right. It's all full circle. Oh, more lashes. I'm he coming. coming right at more lashes. He coming. Oh, nah. When Deion Sanders oh, nah. okay. stood against Colin Kaepernick's protest in 16, oh. I branded him a Negro pen. Oh. He did? Yes, he did. He said he did. He, I saw him. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Okay. Okay. Look at his face. All right. Mm, I didn't even think about that. Let me drop the bass on him. I didn't even think about that. Him say it out his mouth okay. on an interview. Mm. He said he should not have taken that knee. It was wrong. Ooh. Deion Sanders. Ooh. I put him in the Negro peeing camp because he didn't stand with Colin Kaepernick. Ooh. When I heard Deion Sanders was taking the job, Ooh. I said, okay, I'm going to give him his black pass back. Mm. Because here you are, one of the top five greatest athletes, arguably the greatest football player ever. Not lying. Including Tom Brady. Deion could go. To How many lashes for John Legend? A million a until you can't recognize his back no more. Now, as greater than you go to Jackson State HBCU, mm -hmm. that's impressive. Now, I hear all of a sudden you might be leaving. Well, so, he's, he's leaving. what did he say? What did he say? Hold on, now, as greater than you go to Jackson State HBCU, mm -hmm. that's right. impressive. Now, Ooh, I hear I all of a sudden saying. you might be leaving. I see what he's saying. Well, so, he's, he's leaving. Oh, he's, he's going. Oh, he's he's going. going. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see what he's saying. He's wrong. But I have two levels of wrong. Mm -hmm. I got a low level and I got a high. I'll explain them to you quickly. My low level. If Dion told the administration and the students mm -hmm. and the players mm -hmm. at Jackson State mm -hmm. that I'm taking this job, mm -hmm. but I need y'all to know mm -hmm. if something better comes along, as soon as it comes along, I may be leaving you. He did say he, that. He said that. If he was that transparent, I didn't see that. I, I played the clip the other day. He they said it on 60 Minutes. He said that. Um, no, he said he may be leaving. He did not say he was leaving after three years. No. He no, I do remember. I do remember him saying something along the lines of uh, the budget for the HBCU isn't that high. And there are certain things that I think the school wasn't even able to do or accomplish that Dion was trying to request uh, because of said budget. So from what I remember in that context, he might not be wrong on that. He said that he if said a power, power five, five school, school comes office, along, yes. uh -huh. I have to entertain it. I would be a fool not to. And Dion has That's always not been the same. No, Dion has always they they really make they 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 coming, they 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 coming. He coming, but they coming like a little bit harder. He's been transparent and open about what his goals were. That is not no. I oh God, disagree with you. He told them if it comes his way, he would have to entertain it. He never said I would leave you that soon. He never said, I, I mean, does it matter how soon he left if he's willing to entertain the idea of it? And I'm pretty sure, like, are they, are they, like, are they playing right now? I mean, I, I know they're playing right now, but, like, it, what, what was JSU's last game? Can be gone in three years. What does it matter, though? His contract was I'm going to tell four. you why it matters. I'm about to tell you right now okay. why it matters. Because he damn wrong. Okay. Now, if he told them, if I'm going to go back and study. Last week, did they win or did they lose? I think they, I think they lost. I don't remember. But from what I seen him say, he was not that direct. Okay, okay. But Definitely if he was, was, if he was, mm -hmm. and that's not what I saw, so I, we disagree there. But if he was, he's still wrong, but it's a low level because at least you was transparent and you gave him informed consent. Mm -hmm. They knew you could leave at any time. That's right. right. Okay? Still wrong. I'm going to explain Wait, in a minute. was Dion even getting paid at JSU? No, I know he don't need the money most likely, but I don't. I'm pretty sure he wasn't getting. Okay, that's not a lot, though. That's not a lot. Compared to what he could get, that's not a lot. But I get he was going there to basically do a favor, but I think he made that known very, very early on, that he was basically doing a favor and he was trying to keep it, like, communal, if that makes sense. Now, if he didn't tell them that, okay, and I'm hearing from people who know athletes on that team, that they were not told it that way. Well, they when were. I say when I say like was he being paid, I don't mean I mean it like facetiously. Like I know he's being paid, but like pennies as opposed to what he actually could get. Or and they're upset because he said that on sixty minutes. Okay, he didn't say it that way, Charlemagne. I yes, saw he that did. he That's did an not. Exact no, quote. he didn't. Exact now, quote. if he did not do it that way, that automatically means that Deion Sanders used 
abused and exploited HBCU Jackson State just to be given an opportunity to show predominantly white institutions that he could coach. If he only used them as a stepping stone to getting a job at a white college, he was dead wrong. I don't think that's true at all. I don't think that's true at all. I think if you're doing a favor for a nigga, obviously you're going to be acknowledged by anyone who's seeing that. He did a deal with Barstool to make his entire journey almost as a head coach over at JSU Public. I mean, the whole thing was about exposure. I think that that I honestly think that JSU was supposed to be a really good, a really good little home team for his sons, both Shador and and I forgot the other one's name. I forget the other one's name. They both were playing for him at JSU. He put his whole like name on JSU. I don't think that he would do all of that, build up the whole school just to be like, yeah, I can't wait to leave these niggas for a higher paying job. Shiloh, there you go. Now, let me tell y'all why this is bigger than football. Mm -hmm. What case is the Supreme Court reviewing right now? Yeah. Right. And, and, and even still, even still, even if he wanted to leave, the, even if he wanted to leave, JSU being the, the, the quote unquote powerhouse that it is now, having the great year or two that they've had since Dion has been there, they can get a better head coach. Not saying that they'll be better than Dion, but they'll have access to better head coaches as a better team. More more coaches are going to want to come in and, and represent JSU knowing that they are much stronger after Dion left. It, D, Dion even being a part of the fucking school is enough for other niggas to be like, yo, I might need to come here and, and leave my impact too. I might need to come here and leave my mark too. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Affirmative now, action? The case against uh, eight, uh, co black, what is it, for black students in colleges? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That team was there for Dion. The players finna bounce. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think players are are very community based. I, outside of like, okay, if if they get if they get an opportunity at other schools that they think are, are also strong, but I think a lot of them have internalized a lot of the shit that Dion was trying to teach them, and I do think they are a strong team. If y'all are even saying right now that they undefeated, that's not a weak team. They can so easily be swayed by any person that'll come and offer them X Y Z. I don't know. I don't I don't agree with I don't agree with him on this. The U.S. Supreme Court right now is reviewing whether or not racially conscious admissions mm -hmm. in higher education are unconstitutional. And guess who is bringing the suit? Asians. Well, you know, they ain't going to Colorado. But guess who's funding the suit? White people with connections to the six conservative justices on the United States Supreme Court bench. So. What they're saying is Asians. Wait, how did we get to Asians? Wait a minute. We was just on Dion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court right now is reviewing whether or not racially conscious admissions mm -hmm. in higher education are unconstitutional. Reviewing whether or not. Wait, say that again. Tell y'all why this is bigger than football. Mm -hmm. okay, what case is the Supreme Court reviewing right now? Yeah, right now. The the case against uh, eight, uh, co black, what is it, for black students in colleges? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court right now is reviewing whether or not racially conscious admissions mm -hmm. in higher education are unconstitutional. And guess who is bringing the suit? I mean, of course. Suit. Asians. But guess who's funding the suit? White people with connections to the six conservative justices on the United States Supreme Court bench. Okay. So. What they're saying is Asians are discriminated. Yeah, why didn't he just say affirmative action? against on the base that like I, that really fucked me up. <laughs> of the personality aspect of the admissions process mm -hmm. at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, among other universities, by subjecting Asians to that personality assessment, which includes personality, background, social economic status, culture, this that, who you are, what you want to be. Asians are being penalized for the high test scores and grades. I know it's ignorant to, 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 to think about this right now. And I know he said Asians, but for some reason, I just I cannot get the, 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 the Nori clip out of my head. Chinese niggas got something to do with this. So what that I'm sorry, that is that might be one of my clips of the year. It might be one of my clips of the year. It might be Asians want. And what the white folks who are funding the Asians want is they want the Supreme Court to say Chinese niggas got something to do with this. Not
include race at <laughs> all sorry, as a factor in higher education admissions. If they throw that out, if they say Harvard cannot use the personality assessment portion of the admissions process, the percentage of Asians that get accepted into PWIs goes up by 20%, and the percentage of black students will plummet by at least 50%. You know what that means? You are watching the gentrification of black children off of the PWI campus. How is this relevant to Deion Sanders? The reason I'm so personally disappointed in Deion is I thought he was there for a movie. You want me to play a clip? You want me to play a clip? <laughs> Wait, can I, can, I, can I say this? Hey, yo, I'm actually tuned in this part. of what's classified as wrong think right. because you have group think right. it is very important <laughs> to have the black vote be in group think and to not separate from the thought and be in completely in line with the agenda of the left the jewish media and the chinese that's a lot of chinese things got something to do with it <laughs> <laughs> no uh, is who the fuck is this baby my stadiums because of it's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it. It's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it. It's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it. It's a lot of Chinese. Yo, it's the look on his face, like he was genuinely like, I'm trying to shoot him some bail right now, but Chinese niggas. It's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it. <laughs> It's the hand motions. It's everything. This is the like. How do you how do you get such a terrible moment out of someone, and then at the exact same time make one of the greatest clips I've I've ever seen? Like everything about this clip is perfect. The sheer confusion in his face, the the hands to keep him guided to like where are you going with this? Like I need to the Balenciaga shirt. Oh my god. It's all it, it's so great. It's the whole clip is fucking amazing. Jesus Christ. Yay in the background. Like what the fuck? It's too much. It's a lot of Chinese things got something to do with it. It's that's great. That's great. I'm sorry, that's great. That's fucking amazing. I might, I might have to do a like eclipse, like top moments of 2022 at some point. There's no way. There's no way. Movement, not for money. Meaning, Deion Sanders, the coach of Jackson State. I foresaw a situation where Deion would hire other coaches, other retired black NFL greats, to coach other HBCUs. In doing so, you attract our top tier high school athletes to come to maybe HBC. okay now nah, i see what he's saying i see what he's saying. i see what y'all was saying and i see what he was saying i get what you're saying you maybe stay with me Eddie George Foot, is stay State. with me stay with me football and back you know like i know if you got top tier nfl greats coaching hbcus the athletes are coming maybe. just like they was coming for Dion. he showed you Charlie. Dion, though, he showed Dr. you Umar. and his other ones just as great famous people ever. and his other ones just as great so listen Eddie george at tennessee state that's one person we talking about a system not an individual so Dion and these other coaches bring all these athletes from high school to play football, basketball, so forth. The revenue of the HBCU goes up, Envy. As mm -hmm. a result of the revenue, I agree with that. I agree with that. The schools got more money. I got. I got to get lashes for that. Okay. They don't have to subject themselves to closure. They don't have to subject themselves to being dependent on white money. You got HBCUs at risk of being closed. I read something that said almost a half of them, a half, may not survive the decade. So this was bigger than football. This was about the survival of the HBCU. It's bigger than Dion, especially, though, Dr. Umar. No, yes, no, it is. I think no. We, stop trying you to. Blame, you're blaming an individual. To, no, you're stop trying. And this is what I agree with Charlemagne on. I there's so many layers to unpack with this type of stuff because do I look at the system that has created this 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 is institutional like instability within uh you know black communities and say okay because a rich for the most part rich you know athlete comes in to, to help a situation that, that that he is now responsible for the instability within that system like i feel like i get where he where he's coming from and the personal responsibility that one can take in a situation like that but at the end of the day it isn't his personal responsibility to maintain the system of that it's just not you don't you don't change the system by playing it you don't 
But at the end of the day, it's like how this person immediately becomes responsible for that type of thing. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I do understand what he's saying. Because w- without their assistance, without their help, he's basically saying that it's not going to get changed. They're not going to get more funding. They're not, they're not going to get more money. So I, I, I get what he's saying, but I also find it shaky. I also find it shaky. I get it. It's shaky warrior status, but Akon, how is Dion being a coach going to fix all these? It's not that it's going to fix all those complex issues. He's mainly speaking about like money, which is funny because earlier on in his interview, he was talking about how money wouldn't fix any of the problems with the black community. He was just saying that earlier on, but the funding for these colleges at the very least can help them stay stronger uh can help these you know the the budget for a lot of this shit you know what i'm saying akon building a city <laughs> okay where though didn't he sell that like electric little system that was based about like like china to in, in africa didn't he sell that or whatever I, ho- I hope i hope i hope that's not like completely true they talking about akon because he's building a city okay yeah no i didn't go to an hbcu you think if I went to an HBCU, I would be 20% black? I'd have been lied about my, my test results. I'd have been lied. I'd have said my whole shit, 100% like Nigerian, uh, Haitian, Jamaican, blah, 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 blah. I would have said so much shit. My whole result would have been totally different. I'd be so much more proud. Trying to give you're, celebrities no, a pass, no, Charlamagne. No, you're blaming an individual I'm instead not blaming of talking about him. the issue. I'm blaming black men for not being men. But you know what? I'm that, blaming us listen, for not being men. That was an can, unmanly can, can, move. Can you admit one thing? Dion could have went down uh, in history, are H, brother. Are HBCUs chronically underfunded. Of course. Were they chronically underfunded before Dion? Yes. Yes. Will they be chronically underfunded after Dion? Yes. Absolutely. What are those reasons that they're chronically underfunded? We don't because we as black men. Okay, now nah, he losing me. He losing me now. Nah. This is what I don't want people to do. Don't take a system or an issue that's been in existence well before the black millionaire became a thing and then make it their personal responsibility when that issue is still alive and well. I'm just sorry. It's just not true. But I do think that Dion could do a lot with his power and his and his status to help improve that situation. It's just not his responsibility. Do I want him to? Of course. Is it his responsibility? No have not come together to create the funding source to make sure they survive. I don't want to hear about the government. We have too no, many that, wealthy that, blacks. One, exactly. Y'all interview them I, every I, listen, day. I'm with you. So so you got you got low uh don don't low donor low donor low alumni donors. Low, low alumni donors okay. Right, right? Okay. Low endowments. Correct. That's a us problem. He part of us. Why you keep exempting celebrities? He's one person. They're not better than us. He's one person. Okay. Look at his face. I'm sorry. Bro, look at his face. He part of us. Why you keep exempting celebrities? But he's one <laughs> Look at his face. Yeah, like every there's no reason that he there's no reason that a man like this should be this funny, bro. There's just no reason. This nigga is about to kill him. And look at his face and look at his face. It's 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 so great. It's so great, bro. They're not better than us. He's one person. Okay, but the point is that one man could have been a catalyst for a movement that would have revolutionized the what? survival but, of H- I mean, you can't guarantee that. I doubt that all the problems for that would have went away because of Deion Sanders' presence. Although I think that is powerful and definitely a very strong asset to have and maintain to to to, to assume uh, or, or like create this reality in your mind where where his presence fixes a large majority of those problems or becomes the catalyst for what ends up being like the biggest change for Black people. I don't I don't agree. I don't agree. But why, why does the movement stop just because he left? HBCU is going to still be here. You're missing the point. No. HBCU's the abolition gonna still wasn't be here. just about Frederick Douglass, but if Frederick Douglass would have pulled out, it would have hurt it. The Underground Railroad wasn't just about Harriet, but if she would have pulled out, it would have failed. So what was- Wait, wait, wait. This These are completely unrelated. Harriet Tubman pulled out to do what? To go fucking where? She's not going to another slave camp and saying, oh, they're being treated better over here. Let me do my thing over here. She didn't run away to a better. She ran to freedom. What the fuck comparison is this? What are you saying? There was no other option. Of course, there's going to be someone or uh, some outlier to be like, yo, let's get the fuck up out of here. What are you talking about? That was a horrible point. Huh? Who else did he say? It's about Frederick Douglass. But if Frederick oh Douglass would have pulled out, it would have hurt it. The Underground Railroad wasn't just about I can't believe Harriet, you just said but that. if she would have pulled out, it would have failed. So what was the, the HBCU civil rights movement, movement wasn't just Dion. about King. 
Before Dion three years ago, what was they were struggling, and he could have helped save it. Nah, nah. Help save it or save it. You got to be all the way in with this type of shit, bro. You can't pull out, bro. You got to be all the way in. So, like, you either going to say his presence is going to save it or he can help save it. You're basically saying that he could have helped aid in a problem that would have still existed after his presence. So you're basically admitting that he can't fucking fix it. Unless you can confidently say, yeah, he's going to be the one that's going to fix it. You cannot hold him to this standard. And for him to pull out of Jackson State the way that he did it before making sure the HBCU system survived, to me, was selfish. He chose money over the movement, Charlemagne, and celebrities do it all the time, and y'all want to give him a pass. Nobody get that's no some, pass. I, that, that's I don't care who Deion Sanders is. I don't know what Deion Sanders' motivation was, to be honest. I think he's already made majority of the money he'll, he'll ever make in his entire life. If Harriet just stopped coming back to save the slaves and help slaves get through the Underground Railroad, wouldn't be that great. Wait, if Harriet just stopped coming back to save slaves and help slaves through. Bro, I'm not saying that what she did do. I'm not saying that what she did do wasn't enough. But the first I'm not saying that what she didn't do wasn't enough. But the first time. Was just was the point Deion Sanders to Harriet Tubman. I don't know what he was cooking right there. The first time was the point. Whatever happened after that didn't matter the first the first like the motivations for her were completely different i don't know what in what con i don't know why the context is so weird for him to bring up these situations the way he's bringing them up but to 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 to, to try to convince yourself that like harriet tubman potentially pulling out or just not going back is the same thing as Deion sanders up and leaving one school to go to another one and you just admitted that a lot of those students are are pulling out and going with Dion. I don't get what I don't get what you're talking about. Like at the end of the day, I'm not saying that HBCUs aren't 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 extremely important, but again, in an effort to maintain like this core of blackness, and in an effort Since to maintain as future, I know we're off that, but I just got in the stream. She's not as toxic as future. In an effort to maintain this blackness, you've taken away, you've literally prevented black people from having a choice. That's all it is. They comparing Dion being a coach to Harriet leading us to freedom. These aren't the same in any in any capacity. It's like you're preventing people from being able to choose. Now I'm not saying that the choice that you're offering isn't great, but you're basically saying fuck your freedom to black people right now. That's what you're saying. In an effort to make them responsible for the same systemic issues that you blame white people for. Where are you going? You know is a good solution. Lashes. Okay. He had a chance to help and he hurt. And y'all want to condone that because you black celebrities are not committed to the best interests of black well, people. Let me ask you a question. He's saying if Harriet pulled out of escaping them, other people wouldn't have escaped. He's saying people need the leader, then players following Dion, and they are leaving. So Dion leaving the school leaves it in jeopardy. It's once again this is totally different these are not comparable once again in any way shape form or capacity these aren't the same at all Dion being able to fr like i and i get like how metaphorically speaking people can convince themselves that these th these things are related but when you understand the severity the stakes in the situations involved, this is a crazy frame. <laughs> this is a crazy frame. Well, you understand the situation. You can't, you wouldn't, no reasonable person would ever make that comparison, is what I'm trying to say. I, 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 I get what he's trying to say, but no reasonable person would ever make this comparison. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. And to entertain it, genuinely, I feel like you got, like, he has like you, you got to convince yourself like you got too much time on your hands you got too much time on your hands i don't even believe that was an analogy that was a literally a, like a blatant comparison he literally just did that i'm sorry but as black people we do we do need to actively think more about how something we do affects our race a hundred percent again my point isn't that dr umar is making a stupid point i agree and would like for Deion Sanders to stay closer to the black nation. I don't know why I said nation, but stay closer to black in that regard so that overall long term it could be strength. But 
when you take away or when you try to shame black people for having the freedom to make their own decisions because you want them to be so pro-black that they're always thinking about black people at heart, you're taking away their freedom to decide. And then at that point, I'm like, how are you any different from the people that you are criticizing for taking away black people's freedom, bro? I'm not, I never said it doesn't help. I never said it doesn't help. I never said it doesn't help. Of course, Dion being there would help. But I'm saying, or unless that's not what you're referencing, but I'm saying that you can't expect that out of him just because he's black. That's all. You cook, you too cooked right now to hear me? Well, then you, you, you a lost, you a lost soul. You a lost soul. You a weak link. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. When, so next question. Though. When Dion was coaching high school kids for several years, uh -huh. you know, when he we was. We ain't talking about no, that. We talking about no, survival listen, listen, of listen, HBCU. Listen, listen. Me, I'm going to get there. When he was coaching high school kids for several years, you know, black kids, when he was opening up Prime Prep Academy that got closed down because they had financial issues. When he went to Jackson State for $1.2 million for four years and said, you know what? Y'all didn't take, even stay for four years. But listen, y'all take half his salary <laughs> and go, and go build a, a better facility. Uh -huh. Relax. Go build a better facility uh -huh. for students. Uh -huh. And he got to pay yep. back $300,000. And after all that, I'm still going to leave Jackson State for a super white College who that got a 1.6 black student, but you ain't let me finish my point. Rate no, how, how no, you, wait. Can you say he said no. 1.6 black students, which means the only blacks on that campus are the athletes, and you're going to tell me that that's a step up. You sold us out for money, bro. How can you say it's about money when you he's he, show, when his track record shows he stayed he don't for pour three years? That was money. no commitment. His track record shows that if white people give me the money, I'll turn my back on the HBCU. I disagree. So, I can't. I can't assume that that's. What his I can't assume that's what his motivation is when at this point in his career he's already made the most money he's ever going to make in his career years ago. I just don't believe that is his true motivation. I genuinely do not I genuinely do not believe that's his true motivation at all. I just don't. He's it, it, the, the all of his money is is well behind him. It's just well behind him. I'm not saying money has zero to do with it. I'm just saying I cannot believe that that is his main point. I can't believe that's his main point in going. I don't know what his point in going is, to be honest. But I can't believe that that's his main point. I just can't. There are many different motivations. I just don't know. I'm literally saying I don't know. Holding black people to a certain standard, not taking into account the disparity when it comes to money and the benefit it could be on us as a community uh definitely makes sense i definitely agree with what he's saying i agree with his sentiments i just think it's short-sighted no white college is giving him a head coach position the way this hbcu did um hey i can't say to be honest i cannot say mind you Dion brought his homies to coach and help the team at jsu they were underpaid too and had to feed their family it's it's so many layers, bro. It's a lot of it's a lot of different reasons. It's a lot of different layers, bro. I just think it's very difficult to make such bold claims and assertions about this person doing it uh, primarily for money in this regard when all the money he's made is well behind him. He's already made he's already made a ridiculous amount. I don't think he's you're ne like as a as a head coach. Looking for a payday as a head coach when you've been a, a, a like a prime NFL player in your career at some point is really stupid. I don't, I don't get why that would ever cross your mind. Hey, what are you talking about? That's what he did. I disagree. That's what he just did. I disagree. I, Come on, I, I, man. I, 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 if he would have stayed there, if, if Dion would have stayed there, like I said, he could have brought other black coaches in, former NFL greats. They would have raised the revenue of the HBCU, which is so critical now. Why? Because the Asians are being financed by white folks to kick what little blacks are left on the PWI campus off. So that means the critical importance of the HBCU is great. Greater now than it's ever been. So for Dion to pull this right now makes it even worse because you're leaving the HBCU system when so, you had a chance. So how many I don't. I, I agree with him, but again, I don't. It's 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 gonna take so much more than just Dion Sanders. And I know he's not trying to say, even though he's implying it. I know he's not trying to say Dion's gonna be the problem solver for this whole issue. But my issue really is just like, dog, what? No, 
Uh, my issue really is just like there's so many other factors that come into it. There's so many other factors that come into play when you're talking about this that I just don't feel like can be pinned solely on Dion's lack of presence. That's just not the issue here. It's one of them, but it's just not the main one. Stop trying to exempt black celebrities from accountability no. to the race. No. Gotta, gotta celebrities it. are not above accountability. Stop, I agree. So how many lashes? Stop. How many lashes for Dion? Fifty thousand lashes for Jesus Christ. Fifty thousand? No, 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 no. Shut up, shut up. More important question. How much you oh, gonna, oh, no, no, oh. no, no, no. How much you gonna donate to an HBCU today? I'm building two independent schools. Ah, uh, shit. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, okay. The nigga didn't say a number immediately. I don't like this take, though. I think this is a shit take from Charlemagne. Like, I like it, though. I like what he did, though. I did. I like what he did. It's just a shit take. Like, like oh, does has Umar ever claimed to be a millionaire? I, and I would assume majority of the investment that he has is going to go into his school, if that's what's happening. But, like, come on, bro. Like, come on, that's not, I don't expect them to be like, what do you mean, how much are you donating? How much do you expect his donation to dent? What do you expect him to donate? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why people bring this up. Like, how much did you donate? Kanye said the exact same thing uh, not too long ago. I'm the only one that donated $2 million to the George Floyd thing. Okay, nigga, and? What did, what did that do? Not for, for, for George Floyd's family. I'm sure they appreciate it. But at the end of the day, you came around, disrespected they shit, and that didn't stop you from seeing some really ignorant shit. You didn't end up forwarding anything by making that donation to that one per, one particular one particular family. You didn't forward anything. If, in fact, you ended up coming back and then trying to regress black people in this, in a society. They didn't appreciate it at the end. Uh, I wouldn't say they didn't appreciate it. They didn't appreciate his fucking comments about George Floyd after the fact. And so... Asking this question to someone whose, like, status isn't, like, millionaire, billionaire, and they just built a school, I just think it's, a, like, it's like, a, it's like one of those, you think this is a gotcha moment, and it's not. It's just not. I, li I like what he said, though. I do. I like what he said. And the immediate diversion from, well, how much are you donating to, I'm building two independent schools, is fucking hilarious. But uh, I, I, I don't think that's a gotcha. Who's the first in his history? No doubt, but those are HBCUs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stay, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, if you're going to be that no, passionate no, 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 about no, no, HBCUs, no, 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 no. how much no, 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 you going to donate no, no, to an no, no. HBCU Let me today? answer your question. May I? Yes. First of all, I'm not a multi-millionaire. Exactly. Second of all, Why you gotta be a multi can I finish my question? Because that's the only time where donating even matters for the most part. If you're talking about HBCUs, what do you mean? Obviously, if you got more money, you can donate way more and make a way bigger dent. Why the fuck would you take donations from 100 niggas that all have $10 to donate versus a, a large donation from a million or a billionaire? That's a terrible fucking idea. Why is he spitting this? Can I Why is he trying to spin this one now? This is a shit take. Finish my question. I donate to HBCUs on a regular basis. Okay. I do. But my point is I'm focused on destroying this. Take both? Of course. Sure. Take both. But like at the end of the day. Could a could a Kyrie, could a LeBron, could a could a Jay Z come in and easily overtake that like a hundred million fold? Yes, they could. School to prison pipeline. I'm building two independent. And that's the question that Umar is asking in this reference. Like, you just asked Umar this question. I doubt you asked Dion. I doubt you. Asked, and I'm not sure. I'm not saying that Dion was on the on the Breakfast Club, but I'm saying I, I doubt you asked. Well, where was Dion's donation? I doubt you asked. Well, where was Jay Z's donation? I doubt you asked. Well, where was Will Smith's donation? I doubt you asked. Well, where was this person's donation? You didn't ask that. You ask a random dude who's speaking passionately about a subject and then equated his level of care for the subject to how much he could donate to it. I don't think that's accurate. That's not an accurate view or accurate way to view somebody's level of care for a thing. And it's certainly not a gotcha because I know that's what he thought it was in schools. And from I, I, the I ground, applaud you for that. black money. Nobody you've ever Ow, in this fuck. studio ever is doing that. Not one of them. You understand me? So I'm doing my part, and that's why I can expect Deion Sanders to do his part. And that's why lashes also go to Shannon Sharp. Because <laughs> Shannon Sharp on national television said he didn't even want to go to an HBCU. He wanted to go to a PWI. Right. And every time celebrities try to do something good, black people want to beat them up. I beg your pardon, Shannon Sharp. I know that you don't date black women. You have no loyalty to black women. Now you want to tell the world you have no loyalty to the HBCU. If you didn't want to go to 
Savannah State, you keep that to yourself, you Negro pen. You don't tell the whole world that you didn't want to go to an HBCU. I agree. There are certain things where it's like, yo, this 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 happened, but it's such an outlier situation, or I'm such an outlier to it. It's probably a detriment to say something like that, especially if you got a platform. I agree with him on this. And then try to chide the black community for asking Deion Sanders to have a little commitment. With, I, I, with all that said, Dr. Umar, what do we do for HBCUs moving forward? Because Deion okay. gone, but HBCUs we, gonna we still be here. I just guys. told you, black celebrities mm-hmm. have to come together. They do. I, I, I 100% agree with his take about black celebrities and black people of influence that have a lot of money uh, banding together to support something when you know uh, that diverting and pointing the finger back at the system, which you vehemently disagree with and, and, and understand isn't prioritizing uh, black success in any capacity. Uh, when you look at that, yeah, you should come together and fund. You should. That's it. Otherwise, I don't know what else he's saying that they can do. How much you donating? <laughs> okay, Charlemagne. Stop buying chains. Stop going to clubs and strip joints. Stop with all the expensive clothing. Stop cooning and use some of this disposable income that we spend it on Christmas gifts right now. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, brother. I can't tell people not to buy what they like. Black strippers do matter. But it's a lot of shit that people don't need. A lot of people living crazy, crazy frivolous right now. So I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of them could pull back on some of that, some of that spending, some of that flexing. They could, they could. That's not, that's not, that's not wrong. That's not a wrong take. And I'm not gonna tell people what to do with their money, but you definitely could use it on something better. Come up with a funding source. So many celebrities went to HBCUs. Why can't they be the catalyst? of a black celebrity and grassroots because we should be paying to absolute movement to finance this i'm simply saying dion could have been the face of that and was beginning to be and he allowed himself to get bought out by a white but he left the blue i don't think there was enough interest though to be honest but hey if that's what you think that's what you think i disagree um but i definitely think that there could have been a lot of more a lot more positive could have came from dion staying with jsu than leaving i agree with that for it that's a, I don't want to hear about no blueprint. <laughs> he left the blueprint. That's like Harriet Tubman saying, I'm 